What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome to another session of the Gavagal Podcast, Wednesday Hot Topics, live out of San Francisco on this beautiful Wednesday night. It's a beautiful day right now in San Francisco. Beautiful night. Hope you guys are ready. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a great show planned for you guys, and we have a special topic to discuss with you guys. I know a lot of you guys have been reaching out. You guys are excited for this topic, and we have a great panel of beautiful Pacifica Islander women to discuss this tonight. And I see a lot of you guys too late to quit already in the live chat. Thank you so much already. Let's get that live chat popping. But as always, get your popcorn ready, and let's get it. What are we arguing about? A man is going to do what a man wants to do. Yes, all on your wrist. Make you my wife, you no longer my bitch. Oh, wow. Let's get it. My name is Will. I'm the first to the show. Number one pollinator podcast in the world. Dripping, dripping in Versace. All these other hoes trying to copy. Women tend to bounce around in relationships. They can't stick and stay in a long-term relationship. Again, don't agree with this. Just... So let's say, are you still in it? Are you still in it? No. So you're basically saying I'm a whore. I'm a whore. This content is not suitable for the children under the age of 18 without adult supervision. Please be advised. So I just wanted to take the time and make this video to apologize to absolutely nobody. Welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> Hopefully my sound effects are working. Thank you so much, everybody. Welcome back to another session of the Gava Club Podcast, Wednesday Hot Topic Show. As you guys can see, we have a full panel tonight, and we have more people joining on uh, pretty soon. Uh, as always, you guys already know, my name is Will. I'm your host of this show to your top local number one Polynesian podcast in the world. Oh, uh, let's get it, y'all. We have a great show planned for you guys, as always, to all my supporters out there, people who subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe for the algorithm. Don't forget, this is a public show. If you're tuning in for the first time, as always, uh, this is a public show, public live stream, so anybody can join and be part of the discussion. If you want to click to find the link to be able to join us on the panel, the link is in the description of the video. So just go in the description of the video, you'll be able to see the link, click on it, and you'll definitely be able to jump on. Whether you agree or disagree, if you if you watch my podcast, I'm always open to hear different opinions, whether we agree or disagree, different perspectives to add on to our discussions, okay? Uh, don't forget, this is uh, a live stream, so let's get the, uh, uh, as always, appreciate you guys always supporting me on the live stream. Let's get the live chat popping, let me know what you guys think. Uh, say hello if you support the channel. If you recognize one of us on here on the panel, say hello. Show some love in the live chat, as always. Don't forget my locals. A lot of you guys support me on my local subscription community page. So if you definitely want to support the channel, uh, the channel financially, and definitely want to help me improve my po uh, my uh, my podcast, and of course give you guys better production quality as far as content. Always trying to make sure I give you guys the best con content I can give you guys. Uh, support my locals. The descriptions of video in the bottom of the video. And of course, you get access to exclusive content, direct access to me. And of course, you'd be able to get the uh, the link to be able to join me on my Friday night podcast and Saturday night podcast when I bring people in on the in-studio podcast as well. And you'd definitely be able to see the vlogs of my behind the scenes when people come to the studio. So uh, yeah, definitely click on, click on the link and support me and my locals. But uh, that's pretty much all my YouTube stuff as always. As always, thank you so much for everybody to support me. And people to follow my channel and of course definitely follow me on all the other social media platforms and uh, if you guys want to be part of the panel a lot of you guys have reached out to me if you want to be part of a future panel for the wednesday hot topics definitely uh send me dm me on the uh, on instagram or facebook and i'll be able to respond to you and we can book you to jump on and be part of the panel okay nevertheless as always thank you so much shout out to everybody uh but let's get it moving let me go Shout out to the panel real quick. Thanks so much for making the time to be part of tonight's discussion. 
let me allow you guys, you beautiful ladies, to go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction for everybody out there who may not know you who you are. Okay, so uh, Rose, I'll start with you. Go ahead and give yourself a, give yourself a quick intro, and we'll go right into it. Aloha, I'm Rose Santa Briganti. You can find me at Hungry Samoans on Instagram. I live in Las Vegas, and I'm half Samoan, half Hungarian. And always glad to be here and see you, lovely ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Rose. As always, thank you for always being part of the pod. Uh, I'll pass it to you, Irene. Irene, give yourself a quick intro for everybody out there. Um, my name is Irene. I go under Underground Rose. You can find me on Instagram and uh, TikTok under Underground Road. Um, I am a blend of most of Polynesia, so I have Tongan, Chinese, Fijian, and Samoan. And then some. <laughs> All right, Underground Rose, Irene, thank you so much for always being part of the being part of the pod. And last but not least, uh, but not least, Shiri, go ahead and give yourself a quick intro. Um, hello, my name is Shiri. Um, born and raised in Hawaii. Um, I'm half Samoan and half Tongan, and I live in LA now. But I'm always happy to be a part of this discussion. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sheree, as always, for being part of the pod. Thank you for making the time to be part of the uh, panel tonight. Thank you so much. Shout out to you guys. And as always, I know some of you guys are starting to tune in and, and joining in. Let me know what you guys think of the live chat. Don't be, uh, don't be a ninja watcher. All right. Don't be a creep. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys have some thoughts and opinions about this topic, especially the Pacific Islander, the women and the men as well. We'd love to hear what the men have to say about this topic. But ladies, let's go. Let's get right into it. This topic was a special request from one of my subscribers. Uh, she told me that uh, her man, who is Pacific Islander, uh, doesn't really have any, uh, is, not, is not romantic in the relationship. And she said that she communicated this to her man. And her man said, romance is white people shit. Romance is not part of our culture. You can, we don't need romance in our Pacific Islander relationship. It was interesting. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, fear by longing. Don't stop being fear by longing. This is, we don't do this. We don't do this from romance, you know. So, <laughs> So it was uh, it was it's a uh, it was an interesting take. She asked me, "Can you talk about this?" Because uh, she said that as women, we want to be romance. Like, we we want that. But uh, there's a lot of men out there. Uh, there's a lot of men out there. A lot of uh, Pacific Islander men out there uh, that don't believe that this is necessary within our culture. And it's white people stuff. You know, women, you guys, Pacific Islander women don't need romance. All right, um, it's more biological. We get married, have kids, start a family. We're good, <laughs> but we'll see. But we'll see. It's an interesting conversation to have. It's you know, it's modern day 2023. It's a, we live in a different time now. We're not our parents or grandparents' generation. But I'll just open the topic for you guys to just share your general thoughts about uh, what are your original thoughts about the topic at hand, and we can go into more specifics. Okay, so um, let me start with you, uh, Irene. Irene, what's your uh, what's your general opening thoughts about the topic? Do Pacific Islander men and relationships lack romance? It depends. If it's tied to their masculinity, what everyone calls is uh, not being vulnerable in the sense to display public affection. Um, I don't know what generation is is addressing the non-public display of affection. Is it this generation or is it the older generation that's requesting? I think this one was, this guest is the younger generation. Younger generation. Okay. Um, that's a conversation they should have had before they dated. <laughs> You know, because by the time you're married, you've already made the commitment. So I'm not sure where that was lost in the beginning when they were courting or dating each other. 
I really can't give you a yes or no, but from a cultural perspective, we've never displayed, there was never public display of affection. Mm. Um, and it was also uh, also in our parents and our ancestors. Uh, I think some of those things were more sacred and kept um, for intimate moments in private um, rooms of the, the partnership or the marriage. Okay. All right. No worries. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for sharing that um, underground roads. And I see a lot of you guys are just jumping into the live chat. Let's get that live chat popping. Let me know what you guys think about the topic. I want to hear from the men. I want to hear from the fellas. And don't forget, this is a public, uh, public live stream. Anybody can join in. I see too lit. I'm also a potty mouth. Look, I, I don't think you've seen my podcast because I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. So just be yourself. You know, we don't uh, just come here, be yourself. There's no limits of what you want to do, what you want to say here. We're just here to have a conversation. But uh, click on that link. The link is in the description. Jump on. And I would love to hear from more people, men and women, on this topic. But we'll keep it moving. Uh, let me pass it to you, Sheree. Sheree, what are your thoughts, uh, original thoughts, uh, opening thoughts about on the topic? Go ahead. Um, well, you said it's really like a younger generation question if, mm. you know, they've lost romance or not necessarily have romance in the relationship. Um I, again, it depends on the situation um, because I'll be honest, in my department um, with showing affection, the men that I've deal done dealt with, mm -hmm. they're actually really good at showing affection. So like I've never mm -hmm. lacked in that department uh, for myself. Mm -hmm. I would say because they were a lot older for that. And on top of that, um, Sometimes there's just some people out there who I I would say too, like in our culture, we, in my own family, we don't show affection. Like the words, I love you don't really, it's not like a thing. It's just like, you, you should get it. Like you should understand, like I do love you um, type of thing. So it's never like a verbal thing. Um, it was just necessarily an understanding. So not a lot of people in our culture um, really have to share that with each other because it's more of like a known note thing for people and then on top of that there could be other situations maybe they don't know how necessarily to be romantic with their woman so maybe like an excuse can be like it's a fear ball or anything but necessarily like some men just don't know how to show romance like so as a woman maybe taking the lead on that and showing them the ropes a little bit and being the introduction for what romance should be or maybe what their expectations will be rather than assuming that they understand what romance is. They're men. Like feelings in, isn't necessarily the first thing or understanding that they have. And I think a lot of women need to understand that. Like we can't just assume that they are going to know what it is that a woman wants in romance. Some people receive it differently, whether it's through gift giving, whether it's through words of affirmation or mm -hmm. physical touch. It just really depends on the situation uh, typically. But I would say for now, like those are my thoughts on that. All right, thank you, Sheree. You actually made some great points. I wrote it down. I definitely would love to circle back and elaborate more on that. Thank you so much for a great take, Sheree. And uh, I see a lot of you guys in the live chat. Oh, I see Dark Lave just dropped a super chat. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dark Lake Revived. Appreciate you, brother. Just supporting. Have a good show. Dark Horse, Dark Lake Out, LOL. Bless y'all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support, uh, brother. I'll definitely see you. Uh, hopefully everything goes well, and I'll see you soon next week for, uh, for our show. But as always, if you want to be heard, if you have something to say and you want me to read it for everybody to hear on the live show, uh, as you guys can see, there's something called a super chat. Drop it, drop it through a super chat. And I'll be able to read it and respond to you guys. So, uh, yeah, if you def definitely want something to say and you want to su support a donate to the channel, drop it through a super chat. Appreciate you guys. But we'll keep it moving. I see Jordan Hall on the live chat. And, uh, yeah, let's get the live chat popping. But I'll, I'll keep it moving and pass it to you. Rose, Rose, what's your opening thoughts on the topic? You know, do Pacific Island men and relationships lack romance? All right. So I feel that in general, men lack romance. 
So Polynesian men, it's like hit or miss, right? So because we're a conservative culture. And so there's not it's, it's not very romantic when you look at a lot of like the Polyne our Polynesian culture as a whole. Uh, with the way men and women are together because there's no PDA. Um, obviously, they have a lot of babies. But when we look at like our parents, because I, I look back and see like, oh, was my mom ever romance? No, she wasn't ever romance. She's been with a few Polynesian men. They weren't romantic at all. So I feel like romance is more like a modern thing that women are really looking for because we have social media. So we compare we see all these videos of these women who are getting flowers and this and that and posting it. And other women see it and look at their man like, why don't you treat me that way? And the guy's like, it's because, you know, that's a white man. See, that's not for Polly's. And that's just his excuse of basically not being romantic. So that's on him because some men are and some men aren't. I've dated Polynesian men that were and some that weren't. It just, it's, it's not, it's not, um, I would say like exclusive to just like Polynesian men. I just think it's just men, period. There's some that aren't romantic and some that are. My husband is very romantic and he's half Samoan. So I feel that it really is just dependent on the person. It has really no bearing on, on the culture in, in nowadays. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Rose. <clears throat> I appreciate that. All right. And uh, we'll keep it moving. I have a question I want to ask. Um, Irene. So the biggest comp from the person that requested this topic, she said that the the her man doesn't believe in it because in the in the Pacific Islander culture, you know, we're very conservative, like Rose mentioned, right? Uh, we don't really show affection. You know, looking back on my own parents growing up, I didn't really see a lot of affection of. Public, public affection from my parents. But I do believe at the end of the day in a relationship, there has to be some kind of affection or some emotional investment to some degree. Maybe we don't see it publicly in our culture, but there also but I, I do believe there has to be some kind of affection because two people, a woman wouldn't stay with a man that's not showing some kind of form of affection. So Underground Roads uh, is... What is the other? I'm sure. I think the 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 form of romance is probably different. You know, our definition of romance may be different from the West, and in the Tongan culture. So I would ask you, you know, uh, what? I guess in the more traditional conservative Tongan, uh, Tongan or Samoan or Fijian or uh, Pacific Islander culture, and I, I know you mentioned it on the live chat. You know, it's done by deeds. In your opinion, what do you think is the the form of romance? for more traditional Pacific Islanders who may not believe in a Western uh, concept of romance, but we have our own version of romance is we don't show it publicly, but we still have 10 kids. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, like Rose said. So, but, but, but what is, in your opinion, what is the traditional, I guess the traditional uh, form of romance within our culture? So we have, so we can understand the, both sides of the conversation. Well, um, traditional wise, depending on whether people had arranged marriage or not, because you didn't have the, the, the romance component if it was arranged, right? Mm. You had uh, family reps from each side arranging the marriage for the couple. At the same time, I think it's a sacred thing and it's an intimate thing that is between the couple. So it kind of some boundaries in a sense. Mm. Um, from those uh, within the union and outside the union of the couple. Um, you know, I think when you look back at uh, the values to the values, the Tongan values, uh, there's various levels of respect in, in the relationship. Um, and then you have to think about well, you know, if you are going to want to display that in public, there are other people who will be coveting the fact that your partner is showing you the things that they want from a person, right? So you don't want to also advertise um, those intimate things that you share with others. 
because there are people that are out there who are watching the attention and the needs that are met, um, that are shown in different ways uh, in Western culture. Um, but then again, that's just from a cultural take is very, very different. Uh, all I know is from my grandparents, there was, there they had an arranged marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, the the formal thing is you will have a spokesperson on the side of the family coming to her house. So there was no time. It was like a, her duty is to her husband, and so you really never saw any. Um, public display of affection, but we saw how they took care of each other and the deeds and the fact that he fulfilled his role in being the provider, the caretaker, um, while she did her part. Um, so that's just my take from, from my own experiences and what I know of how things took place in our family. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Irene. I just want to ask you, uh, ask you, uh, Sherita and Rose, the same question, you know, because we all Pacific Islanders here. So we got a chance to see our parents and our grandparents' uh, relationship, which is a lot different from the dynamics of what we see today in the West. So I would ask you, like, what, what's your, uh, what was your observation of seeing what, what your, uh, what your relationship, what your parents that you, that, the, the, your, the, your parents' relationship, and now you come here in the West and you see a romance, and um, you know, did you did you guys like have a? Did, are you are you are you more comfortable taking what your parents like the way your parents had their relationship, or you saw your parents? Well, you know what? I never saw intimacy or any affection with my parents. You know what? I I I prefer my relationship to be more affection. I think that's gonna work a lot better for me. Or maybe you, your parents didn't have a lot of affection, and maybe there was problems in the relationship. I just want to, I just want to hear your thoughts of seeing what you saw growing up, and then see what you see now when you grow up as yourself to become an adult, and see what works for you. Was it more aligned with what you saw with your parents, or did you realize, you know what, my culture, yeah, my parents didn't see a lot of affection. I think that 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 caused a lot of issues. What I saw with my parents' relationship, you know what, for me, when I have a relationship, I'm gonna improve on that to make sure I'm more affectionate or find a man who's more affectionate, affectionate so I don't have the same problem I saw with my, with my with the more traditional parents. So I just want to see, I just want to ask your thoughts about comparing what you saw with the older generation and then figuring out what works for you, for yourself in this modern Western you know, world. So I'll start with you, Sherry. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um. Yeah, a little bit. So I would definitely say for my parents um, viewing how their marriage was. Um, yeah. So I have two sets of parents, um, my adopted parents and my real parents, but my adopted parents, they're actually pretty affectionate um, and very open about how they felt about each other, okay. whether it was good emotions or bad emotions. But I, I would say from that, I also learned like, you know, even though they were publicly affectionate, there's some stuff that I, would view that it would have been better to do it in private rather than to be outwards about it. Yeah. So it's like, yes, they're very affectionate publicly, but sometimes some things, um, I wouldn't say they overdid it, but it was just like maybe like arguments or whatever um, had set that to me should be out there for other people to see. Like that's something you would want to do in private, but you know, for them, it's just like, no, it's like we, feel comfortable with telling each other however we feel right there and then. Um, and then I have my other parents who are a little bit affectionate, but their affection was very different. It was more of um, on acts of kindness, I guess. Like it's more of like providing for each other and not necessarily doing any public affection. Like not necessarily holding hands um, kissing, like not necessarily that, like my dad was a really, really hard worker. So for my, for my mom, that was like her love language because he provided and stuff. She mm -hmm. knew she was loved by him just because like he would do anything to provide for our household. And then for my mom too, it's like, 
um, she's not very vocal uh, with her words, affectionate words. So affectionate words is definitely not a thing in our household. Like, I'm pretty sure we'd kind of get, like, really physical, like, on each other rather than, like, saying I love you. But um, I would say for my mom, it was more of, like, gift giving. So buying my dad something to kind of, like, make up, I guess, for something that she did rather than saying the words, like, I'm sorry or I love you type of thing. So um, nowadays I've kind of, like, taken from that. And I just know, like, for me to show love, uh, I definitely would rather um do things and i'm also very vocal but i know how to keep things within my relationship that i know that shouldn't be for public to know and where if i'm going to be showing love to somebody i do like acts of service whether it's like cleaning um going on my way uh to help them on something listen to details and conversations um that later on might you know benefit me with them so yeah that's where I would stand with that. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Sheree. <clears throat> I'll pass it to you, Rose. Rose, what was uh, you know, what what are your thoughts about, you know, obviously seeing the older generation with their relationships, with how they deal with affection and romance and kind of then comparing it to uh, what you saw growing up and just looking at the different types from well, what you what you saw growing up as a, a in your youth and adolescent and then seeing what your parents went through and and what was your take on that, Rose? So <clears throat> my mom has five husbands. She's on number five. So I went through three dads because there's her first husband was before I was born. So my dad's Balangi, but the other two were Samoan. Um, with my dad, he was abusive. So there was no romance. Oh. In the beginning, he romanced her, and, but we never saw it. That's what my mom would tell us. And then with two Samoan stepdads I had, there was absolutely no romance. Um, but again, those are relationships that were more con for convenience. They were not really based on love. But the relationship she's in now with her fifth husband is based on love. And I could see a total difference in like the way they flirt with each other, how they're affectionate, not like overly affectionate, like making out, but just like always holding hands, you know, touching like in a, in in, in um, playful ways, um, you know, kisses on cheeks or mm -hmm. in the lips. So it just, it warms my heart to see my mom being that way. I mean, this one time we went to this little getaway and I, I slipped my parents an edible and they didn't know. And they thought <laughs> people were playful and they were like little kids making fun of each other. And I was just like, oh my God, this is heavenly because just seeing them that way was so cute. And they didn't even know they were high. So um, as far as like romance goes, like that was their way to be romantic. It's just like the comments, the little teasing, uh, the little flirting, which is so like, so innocent, almost like little innocent kids. So that, that I appreciate that. Um, and then as far as like, for me, uh, having romance in my life and growing up, not seeing it, not seeing my mom be in a re romantic relationship, I actually yearn for it more because my dad is very affectionate towards us, his daughters and He's very, very like touchy, always complimentative. So I really loved that. I loved that about my father. I wanted that and I crave that in a man. So my first husband, that's what we had. We were very affectionate. That's my number one love language. Um, it was his as well. And then with my current husband now, it's our it's our love language is, is affection, being very affectionate. And PDA is huge for us. We love it, all of it. So, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you for sharing that, Rose. As always, <clears throat> everybody in the live chat, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let's keep that live chat popping. Let me know what you guys think. And of course, if you do want to jump on, uh, as, uh, the link is in the description of the video. Click in. I definitely would love to hear from the fellas and more ladies on this topic uh, at hand. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you uh, ladies on the panel, what did you, you know, uh, there's some things that was mentioned here. I know Cherie brought up, you know, um, for a lot of Islanders, like holding hands is too much. I want to, I want to wanna kind of break down the, the all these things that uh, we consider, I guess, taboo or consider disrespect. I know within the, our culture, like holding hands is like you know for a lot of people, oh, that's too much. But I, me personally, I don't think holding hands is a, is, a, is a problem. I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with holding hands, even if you're in a public setting, uh, in a family function, or you take your significant other to the family to meet your family. But uh, 
but for some for, for some people, if you're holding hands in a, in a family function, that's that's uh, that's too much affection, and that's considered taboo, or maybe that's for some people maybe considered disrespect. But I don't. But I've I've heard from women, and you know, women uh, you want to feel that you don't love. I think Rose brought up the the word love, right? So there's a lot of women, there's a lot of women out there that they want to feel love, they want to feel affection from their man, but then the culture says don't touch him at all. All right, so I want to ask you guys, you know, let's just break down the things that we understand in our culture that uh, people, people may consider maybe the traditional older generation may consider uh, uh, taboo, but it's holding hands. I, I want to hear your thoughts on like, what's what's too much? What's, what, what do you, in your opinion, what's too much romance? What's too much affection? And what's, and what's uh, reasonable? Like holding hands is reasonable, you know, if you want to kiss on the cheek, maybe that's we don't even kiss in our wedding. That's how that's how it's, that's how conservative <laughs> we, we can't even kiss our wife <laughs> in our own wedding, All right? And have you ever seen those wedding old wed, those wedding videos? It's so awkward, you know. You may now kiss your bride and then they just kiss on the cheek or they just hug each other. I'm like, this is your wife, you know, this is your husband. Harvest <laughs> is so awkward, uh, but that's but that's our culture, right? But that's our culture. So I just want to ask your opinion. What do you think is too much? What is too much? All right. Uh, you know, we understand it can be over excessive. You know, if you're just making out in front of everybody. Yeah, that's that, that may be over excessive. You know, take that privately to your room. But holding hands, you know, we want to kiss on the cheek. That's reasonable. So let's let's let's, let's have that discussion in your opinion. What, what's what's reasonable for you? And then what's what is too much for you? I'll start with you on the ground rules. We'd love to hear your perspective. I think holding hands, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sometimes I've seen couples with um, just the wife's hand on her husband's shoulder or his arm around her, um, you know, but nothing more. Um, <laughs> I'm very stoic in that sense. I'm raised that traditional way. So the modern take of um, um, display of affection, public display of affection is very um, un not normal for me. So I had to learn those things. But at the same time, uh, there were boundaries established with that, where to do it, um, basically what settings were appropriate to display affection. But to some extent, I think holding hand is fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. Uh, so holding hands is uh, for you. There's no holding hands for you at all. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. I think oh, that's, that's, fine. Fine. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but there's a time and a place to display affection. And to some extent, I mean, holding hand, I don't see anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. But again, okay. it depends on the function you're attending and the setting you're in. Okay. What about... Um... What about kissing? Like, you know, just kiss on the cheek or, you know, you don't want to give your, your significant other just a quick, you know, kiss on the lips. Um, you know, a lot of couples do that. Hey, you know, they, they see each other, they, you know, they greet each other. Hey, 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 baby. Mwah. But, you know, one second. And then, you know, it's, uh, is that is that too much or is that? Nope. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. Anything comes to mind in your opinion that you think that's, uh, that you see today that's more normalized today that you may think it's over excessive? Within our Pacific Islander people. Oh, if yeah, if they're making out and groping each other publicly, yep, in yeah. inappropriate settings, there's a time and a place for those things, and sometimes it's not in settings that uh, that are showing, as, you know, to some level of respect for those around them at the same time. Okay, all right, no worries. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Irene. <clears throat> I would love to hear why everybody thinks about what's uh, what's reasonable and what's over excessive in a live chat. Let me know why you guys think. I'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, uh, Cherie. What do you think? Uh, what what uh, we talked about holding hands. You know, if you want to add on to that, kissing, anything else you want to you want to add on based on what you see that's normalized today with couples. Um, honestly, like. If I have an other half and I would do that, like I can hold their hand in front of their family, right? Yeah. And the only extent I'll probably go to is putting my head on their shoulder. But 
even I find it kind of like off limits and out of respect. Like I, I wouldn't kiss him in front of um, family. But if I ever took my other half to my family function, best believe he's probably 10 feet away and probably like I'll bring him there. But for me personally, <laughs> like I'm just like, OK, they know we're together, but I'm probably going to go over there and you stay with the men. Like I, I don't want to like hold hands. I don't even want to kiss. Like probably not even make eye contact. Like for my family <laughs> function on my own, it's just like yeah, I want I want them to know that I do have another half, but I'm not gonna publicly show any type of affection. Like for when it comes to my own family functions, man, you 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 probably see like a whole different side of me, and it would probably be like very thrown off because like in front of their family, like you know I'm. I'm very affectionate, like, I'm very loving, and I don't mind holding hands, and I don't go overboard, you know, like, you know, putting my head on their shoulders or something. I would feel more comfortable doing that with their family, and my own, yeah, best believe I'll find every excuse to not be near him, and if I feel like there's a time limit, like, I've been talking to him too long, like, you know, in my family's head, like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, they probably think I'm being cheeky to, to my boyfriend, and it's just like, no, it's not that, you know, so it's just probably, like, for me, that would be my boundaries on necessarily what I would do. So it's just, it's very weird. I, I would say I'm very different depending on location yes. and who I would be around. Yeah. Damn. No eye contact. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, even <look> this way. <laughs> Don't even look this way. <laughs> I guess you just got to wear some, uh, some shades. Yeah, Man, so I'm like, telling you, they're very good at doing that. So I'm like, just keep them on, don't make eye contact with nobody. Yeah, wear some sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they'd be popular for that, you know, they'd be wearing it indoors and everything. <laughs> okay, okay, interesting, interesting. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, for uh, sharing that, Sheree. I think uh, COVID was uh, is normal for you when you <laughs> when, in your family function, <laughs> it didn't make a difference. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> five feet apart, y'all. Five feet apart, five to six Man. feet. Quarantine. Okay. <laughs> All right, but uh, we'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you, uh, Rose. Rose, uh, in your opinion, what's your what's your take on what's reasonable as far as showing affection and what's not reasonable? What's over over excessive? I don't think that it can be over excessive when it comes to affection and touch. Personally. I mean, mm -hmm. me and my family, we're very open around each other when it comes to PDA. So uh, it was never, it's just normal. Like if I see my sister and her man making out, I'm like, oh, that's cute. We're making out. Yeah. But, um, but we didn't grow up like conservative and like in it, like Fa'asamo conservative. Yeah. We just grew up very just open-minded, very, very open-minded. I guess that's more the European side. So, so yeah, I don't. I never heard about, like, this is my first time hearing that you guys have weddings where you just kiss on the cheek. I've never seen that or witnessed that or heard about it. So that's new to me. you never seen my that? My did that for her wedding, too. Oh, so no, cool. Rose, I got to pull it up. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. We got we to watch. Oh, uh, new, and I'm pretty sure if people aren't poly and they're listening to it, they're like, what? That's crazy. Because I think that's crazy. I've never heard of it. I would definitely say it's more heavily in more Tongan culture than majority of any other culture. Yeah, I would say that, more Tongan and Fijian. Or is that like way back in the day? No, today. No, they still, still do it today. today. Yeah. Yep. That's insane. I think that's insane. That was uh, Rose. Oh, I'll, I'll find I'll find a video. And we'll play it so you can see. Yeah, you. They had a kiss on the cheek, or they uh, they just hug each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> crazy, because even my mom's wedding, they kissed. You know, it was so romantic. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never, and, and then when you were talking about, Sherry, when you were talking about how you, you and your boyfriend, is it husband or boyfriend? Boyfriend. Yeah, that's just, that's insane to me. That's so foreign. I've never heard. That's like worse than like Muslim culture. So. Yeah. And it's weird too, because like, even for my family, but like I said, my family dynamics is a little bit different. Like public affection isn't a thing unless like maybe everybody's probably drinking and then they're just joking around, you know? They're like telling their husband to come there and they'll hug them. But it's just like it. I wouldn't say it's normalized necessarily in my own family where showing public affection is a thing like. And now I'm either less strong headed in my family. So they're like, you know, a little hardcore. So it's just like even if a man try to come over to hug you, they're just like, like back up. Like, why are you trying to like hug me? Like to them, they would consider it more of a weakness if I'm being honest. So it was more something I had to learn 
uh, when I moved away from home and learned from other people, like you can accept love. And I was like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, that's kind of weird. But then now I have an understanding. I was like, oh, okay, so that's more of like my family dynamic type of thing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if I was around maybe my extended Samoan family, I don't know how I would act because I've never been around them with my husband. So, but I wouldn't change my behavior just because of what people think or out of respect because like I'm free to do what I want. And if I want to be affectionate, like, and they judge me for it, then so be it. I don't care. I don't think you can be excessive. I mean, obviously you're, you don't want to like have sex in front of people. Of course. So I think that's like the limit. Unless they, unless they want to see it. <laughs> you know, some people like what I like. Mean. And, and then, then, not, not around kids. No, no sex around kids, of course. But then we are kept in check by elders in the settings. So yeah. Yeah. I think because I'm half, like I have an excuse. I don't know, because I, I've never been held to like those standards of Fa'asamo because I'm half. So I wasn't raised that way. So because I wasn't raised that way, they can't they can't check me because I'm half. So and that's usually what, what happens is they can't say da, 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 because I'd be like, well, my dad was, you know, he wasn't someone. He didn't raise me to understand and do those things, even though I know and I wouldn't like make out in front of like my aunties. That would be weird or my uncles. But if I was around my cousins, I don't think it matters. For me, that's like hard because like even with me, I'm like half Samoan and half Tongan. But because I was adopted, I didn't necessarily grow up in my Samoan and Tongan culture until I was 14. So from birth till 14, all I knew was more of like a whitewash type of love. Like my, it was a Hawaiian style. Like if you guys ever met people from Hawaii, they're very affectionate. Like kiss on the cheek, hug everybody. Like you eat with your cousins, sleep, have sleepovers, like all in the same room and stuff. And then until I was 14 and moved with uh, my biological mom, when I tell you all of that went out the drain and they told me like everything I was doing like was a no-no in our culture. And I was like, but I never knew that. And I never understood that. And I was, you know, judged very heavily on that because in their eyes, like, oh, she's cheeky. Oh, look at her, like, you know, trying to be. And it was just like, no, like, you know, that's what I've learned, like, to be affectionate. Because in Tongue culture, I never knew, like, you can't touch the top of your father's head or men in your family. Or they kind of eat separately. Like, I never knew that growing up. So, like, you know, if I'm playing around with my brother, like, it was like, what the heck are you doing? Like, you're not supposed to touch them. And I'm like, that's not something I knew. And it's because just because I am someone in Tongan, they think it's an automatic thing that you're supposed to know. But it's just like, yes, it's in my DNA and I understand that. But that's not something I grew up with. Like I had a very more uh, whitewashed or Hawaiian style of growing up necessarily. So it was just like those were not off limits. Like never was I in a room with my boy cousin and I had my auntie passing by like, what are you guys doing? Because I was never planted in our heads. And then when I come to a Samoan or Tongan household, it's just like, no, you guys cannot be in the same room. And you, you know, they, they may not necessarily say why, but you know, you guys kind of figure out why later on. But I feel like that's what the fear ends up being planted into somebody's head because now they're thinking like, why would we do something like that? And then some people end up doing it. So it's just like, it won't be a thought in kids' head unless you put it there. So it was very different. So even though I didn't grow up that culture, I couldn't use that excuse because to them, it, because it's in my blood, I should should have known that. So mm -hmm. I had to relearn basically everything in my life um, from what I was taught. So basically everything I was taught was wrong in someone in Tongan culture. And I had to learn in different family settings where I could on show an affection and then turn it off in different functions, sitting with certain people um, walking past people, it, it's just a different dynamic. So it just really depends. Mm. Okay. All right. I actually found a video um, of a Tongan wedding couple kissing. <laughs> let, me, let me play the video so you can see it, Rose. <laughs> so you can see it. So it for the first time. I'm surprised you've never seen it, Rose. You've never seen these types of weddings. No. Maybe I was just young and I just didn't pay attention. You can see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
and now may the blessing of God the Father, who gives joy to the bridegroom and bride, be upon you. The blessing of God the Son, who brings new life to the world, be upon you. And the blessing of the Holy Spirit, who brings us together in love, be upon you this day and evermore. Amen. Oh wow. <laughs> What do you think, Rose? Let me watch that. I think it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah, I think it's weird. I've never seen. Yeah, I've never seen that scene. You've never seen that before, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> but it's, uh, as always, as everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're watching right now, let, let's get that live chat popping. Let me know what you guys think, and of course, don't forget to like. And if you do want to jump on, the description is in the description is in the bottom of the description. The public link to join as a public guest is in the description of the video. But so uh, we'll keep it moving. I have a question for you guys. I think one of the things I heard from uh, from the fellas, and I would want to hear your perspective on it. And I think Irene, you brought it up about you know. Um, it's all about deeds. So for the fellas in from what I heard from the fellas from the Pacific Islander men was that the way men see romance is, is just, I'm just here to provide and protect, take care of you, make sure there's a roof over your head, pay the bills, take care of our kids. And that is enough. So I want to ask you ladies, is if I may, if you, if there is a man, say there's a your significant other, that's all he does, right? It's just, you know, he goes to work, he pays the bills, he makes sure there's a roof over the head, make sure there's uh, the, the you guys are provided for and protected, you got everybody safe. Is that enough to keep a long-term relationship? And he doesn't, you know, he, when it comes to affection, when it comes to romance, he doesn't really show his affections, doesn't really say a lot of verbal communication to talk about, hey, I love you. It's just purely just, Provide, protect, go to work. Hello. Okay, let's let's procreate now, you know, for kids, for biological purposes. But is that enough? Because that's what that's what the guys are saying is look, I pay the bills, I go to work, I make sure my family and my wife is safe. Why are the women saying all this extra romance, you know, BS? You know, I'm doing my job, I'm doing my role as a man. Like, what do you want from me? What do you want more? Is that not enough? So uh, I would, for me, my my pushback, I don't, uh, my pushback is, is these guys uh, lack the understanding of women. You know, women with our needs are different, right? So, for us, it may be physical, but for women, we have to understand that you guys, are, your needs are more emotional. So, and I think it's really, I don't, I, I just don't see a man, even though, shout out to the men who are fulfilling their responsibilities and duties. I, I don't want to take away from that. So, you know, for all the men out there who are providing for their kids, going to work every single day, uh, great job. But it is a relationship, and a relationship takes two people. It's not only you. So I do believe that when it comes from the woman, there is some uh, there is some emotional investment needed in order for that woman to get her needs and to make sure to keep that relationship going. So I think Underground Road, you brought up a concept about, you know, our we didn't see that with our parents. But also we have to bring up the fact that a lot of our a lot of our parents they got had arranged marriages um in the traditional sense a lot of our parents had a uh, there was they were they were married in divorce uh, they were married in religious uh families so there was no divorce so even if the woman was unsatisfied unhappy in the relationship there was a big stigma against divorce and you know and then if you leave if you leave the relationship a lot of women would stay in a marriage they weren't happy and if they weren't feeling the emotional investment, because you know, in the in the traditional times, she would be ostracized and her reputation would be tarnished. Uh, you left, you know, you left your family, you you broke up your family. So, 
we have an understanding today that you know women you got women do need that emotional investment but there are several other men out there saying you know what i'm fulfilling my duty i don't need to emotionally invest into a woman that's and that's what the, a lot of the guys are saying that's all white people stuff like my parents didn't do it but then when i talk to the women because the women are the one that wanted to bring up this topic for tonight's podcast they're like look my man is doing everything but I, there's the, the lack of emotional investment is causing me to have a problem with our relationship. I don't feel loved as a woman. I'm not under, under I'm not underappreciating what he brings to the relationship as far as fulfilling his duty as a man. I appreciate that. Um, I'm not taking away, I'm not trying to uh, diminish that. I love that about him. But me personally, I don't feel loved as a woman and he's, and he's, not, and he's not open to being more affectionate, being more, more emotionally investing at um uh, into relationship and be more romantic whether it's going out on dates whether it's being spontaneous going on trips or maybe you know you know have the kids uh have somebody babysit the kids for the weekend and let's go on our own personal uh journey you know let's have let's go out for the weekend and just have that one-on-one -on -one time that's what i hear from a lot of the, the women what they're saying based on who brought up this topic but i do hear from the guys from uh, from the men are saying you know what i'm i pay the bills i protect my family that's it. I don't need. We're married. I don't need to emotion invest. We're married. We're committed. We're committed. Like, you know, maybe with the, I did that in the beginning when I was dating to kind of show. But when, once we're married, that's it. I don't need to continue on. But what are your thoughts about that? Because I, I've heard a on a relationship podcast said that one of the tips for a long term marriage is even though you're married, but but still date. Find time to date each other. Find time to to date even in a marriage to keep that relationship and that fire burning. But I would love to hear what you guys think about that. As far as the guys are saying, I'm doing my duty. I don't need to emotionally invest. I don't need to be more romantic and we're married. That's from that. That's the perspective from the men, the Pacific Islander men. We're married. I'm, you have my commitment. It's like, why would I need to show any emotional investment to prove my love? I already, I already committed to you. Right. I already married you. Right. I'm paying the bills. Right. <laughs> I'm taking care of my kids. Right. I don't need to prove anything more or to say all the romantic stuff. So I, I just want to present both sides and I just want to hear what you guys think about that. Is it enough just for a man to just do the, his uh, duty as a man he, and he doesn't really need to have any uh, pr um, improve in the area of emotionally investing into his woman to make sure she does feel loved emotionally? I'll start with you on the ground roads. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think um, for me, it depends on the relationship and the generation. Mm -hmm. um, women and men have needs. Um, sometimes we're not aware that our needs were not met as children. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeking those needs as adults. Uh, I also believe that a relationship should be an active one, not a complacent passive one. Mm -hmm. um, and that it needs nurture. And so when they're pouring to each other, it's like oxygen to the relationship. Mm. Um, and again, it de depends. It's because a lot of us were in a generation that were raised where it was not the norm. So we're learning that it's okay to articulate and express our emotions. What are they, right? In those days, women were very stoic. We never really expressed um, our thoughts and feelings. It was just a duty to uh, have children and it was more of perpetuating the seed than anything, than worrying about romance. Um, but that's, that's just my two cents on that. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that on the Grand Roads. Tie game. Thank you for jumping on as a public guest. I'll definitely come back to you once I'm uh, circle around the panel. As always, if you guys are watching this right now, this is a public live stream. I do. I am open to bring other people in to share a perspective on a topic. We'd we'll love to hear from everybody, but we'll keep it moving. <clears throat> Cherie, uh, well, uh, what are your thoughts about that uh, that I brought up? A lot of guys are saying, I don't need to focus on being romantic, mostly investing. I've done my job. I, pr I provide. I pay the bills. I take. I make sure that there's a roof over the head. We're committed. I'm married to you. Like one more. Like I don't need to prove my love to you. Just be happy. But even though we understand women, you guys are emotional, you got creatures, uh, that's your nature. So you do need that from a man. But what are your thoughts about hearing it, you know, the, what the men are saying? I'll start with you, Sherry. Go ahead. 
Um, I would definitely say that it's that's not just like it necessarily. Like they have to understand for women, it's a constant thing that they have to do with us. Like marriage is not the end goal. For most men, they think it's the end goal, but they have to understand like that's technically the start. Like you guys were working up for that relationship and you have to do things in order to show her like, you know, I can be that person, but just because you're married doesn't mean, okay, now I got her, I got her in a bag, like we're good. No, that's your starting point. Now you guys have a whole lifetime to go. So you think just, you know, from there, like that's supposed to be it. Like for me, I would say marriage is the starting point where it's, you start to fight for what you, you have, like you continue to show her affection. And for, for men, like what they're doing is for, for their responsibilities, I guess I would say like, as a man, like, yes, they have, they put a roof over our head, they pay the bills, they do this and that, but they, they have to understand for women, like they appreciate that, no doubt. But women also receive love through like, um, hearing words of affirmation, like, you know, continuing to do what you did in your dating life and to keep that fire burning. Like it's a constant work. It's not something like, okay, now I got this and then it's, it's over. Like it's a constant thing that you're building up on and I get it. Things do change, but like, that's kind of like same for women. Um, her job is only to cook, clean, go to work and stuff like that, but she doesn't have to come to show you affection so it's just like yes you guys have needs that you guys need to fill but all and all women also have things that they need which is you know affection whether it's physical affection words of affirmation taking them out on dates acts of service um so i think communication is a really important thing for men to understand that women need it's a constant reminder um for me i'm a personal like like I, I'm definitely an overthinker. So I'm definitely a type of person that needs a man to kind of like tell me over and over. It may be repetitive, but it lets me know that they were paying attention necessarily. And it, it just makes me feel loved. And that's how I receive it. Um, for your relationship, it's not necessarily a 50-50 thing. From both ends, it's supposed to be 100% in from the woman and from the man. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right, Sheree, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. I see the Dark Knight on loud chat. I see Balo Fessa. I see Delki Maunga. I see you guys on live chat. Marianne F. Hey, good to see you guys in the live chat. And JS Bobby. All right, I haven't seen you guys in a while, but thank you so much for jumping on the live chat. Let's get that live chat popping. Keep it lit. And of course, uh, if you want us, if you want to be heard and if you want us to hear what you have to say, drop a super chat. I'll be able to read it out and respond to you guys. And of course, you can donate to the channel. And this is a public show. I would love to hear from different perspectives, uh, whether you're Pacific Islander, whether you're not. I'd just love to hear from, uh, from both sides to hear what you guys add on to this discussion. But we'll keep it moving. Uh, I'll pass it to you, Rose, and I'll come back to you, Ty Game. Rose, uh, what's your, what are your thoughts? Because what I hear from the guys is, you know, I provide and protect. I pay the bills. I, I, married, I married you. I put a ring on it. Why do you need me to show you love? You know, if I didn't do all that, that's that's what that's my proof right there. I don't need to emotionally invest. Um, and then that's white people shit. Like, why are we doing white people shit? This is not what we do. Okay, but uh, I'll pass it to you, Rose. What do you think? So it specifically pertains to Polynesian men, correct? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I mean, in this modern day and age women are working. So I don't see how that pertains because women do more than the guys. They work and then they go home, take care of the kids, clean the house, worry about all the budgeting, do the grocery shopping, the laundry, and then taking care of herself. So it's like, of course, we need some emotional support because we have so much weight on our shoulders. When a guy, he goes to work, he comes home and he thinks his work is done. With the woman, a mother, her work is 24 hours if she has kids. So I feel like if that's the case, then yeah, she really needs that emotional support more than anything. 
And if he's saying, no, my job's done, I did enough, then he's a type of guy that doesn't give 100% to his marriage and it's not going to last because someone in the comments said, when women don't have that emotional attention, um, you know, we step out. Whereas if guys don't get the physical attention, they step out. Well, you have to have the emotional to get the physical. You can't have physical without emotion. It's impossible. There's no way. And the reason why mm -hmm. most marriages fail is because it's not physical. And that comes from not being emotionally attentive to your woman. So I don't, I don't get the, um, this whole concept of, oh, I did enough marrying you. But I mean, I did, I did see it once in my cousin's marriage. Um, she was telling me she married someone. She's Hawaiian. She married a someone. And they were romantic and everything. And then when they got married, he was like, no, I don't have to do anything more. You're married. You're mine. Whatever. Yeah. I need to have sex with you even. And that, that was kind of weird, too. So, you know, that marriage didn't last. It didn't last at all. Um, it, was, it was a really bad marriage, actually. So, yeah, I don't feel like marriages will last if that's the mentality of the marriage. If you don't want to make your woman happy in every way, and if you don't want to make your man happy in every way, like it has to be a mutual exchange, then it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rose, you brought up a great point that we didn't address because when we were, we were talking about the guys paying the bills, we were that example was when the guy was the primary bread uh, breadwinner. But interesting enough, the the late the the, the the Pacific Islander girl that reached out to me about to bring up this topic, she uh, they pay fifty fifty, so she has to work as well, and her husband has to work as well. And of course, we understand in, in Western society. Uh, most couples, uh, both the man and the woman, are both working a job to pay the bills. So you, you made a fair point, right? Because you know, if you were paying 100% of the bills, that can be a different conversation. But what if the modern woman, the, she is working too. So you're working, she's working, or maybe she was paying more percentage of the bills. There are women out there that may pay 60% or 70%, pay more. Mm -hmm. So what if she's working and paying more, more contributing to more towards the bills? Um, and you're not fulfilling 100 percent and you don't want to emotionally invest. You know, that that's a fair point that you brought up because we have to bring that up because it, 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 we do all we're living here in America, which is a different concept, uh, different dynamic. So, you know, so that that is a fair point that you brought up and we'll definitely engage in that uh, that conversation. And as always, let me know on, on the live chat. Let me know what you guys think. But uh, let me uh, bring it up to uh, Thai Game, Thai Game. Thank you for jumping on as a public guest. It's been a minute. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hope, everything's, good. I hope everything's well with you. Uh, ladies, prepare yourself, but <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead, Thai Game. Well, you've heard our conversation. Yeah. And I know and I know we're just more specifically talking about Pacific Islander men and, uh, and relationships, but I always like to hear, I, I always like to hear an outside perspective. What do you think, Thai Game? What do you want to add on? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You can, y'all can all hear me. All right. So the question was, let me, is paying the bills, keeping a roof over your head, providing, protecting, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Is that enough in the relationship? Mm. Well, you know, I know a lot of men feel it should be enough. They, they, you know, they feel it should be enough. Like, I take care of you. I protect you. You know what I'm saying? I pay these bills around here. I make sure you got food in your belly. Right? So they feel like that should be enough. But, you know, I've been around the block for some years, like all the rest of y'all. And I know that although a lot of people feel it should be enough, I know that it's not enough. Too many situations in life where the man is doing all that, he's protecting, he's providing, he got food in your belly, you got shelter, he getting your car fixed and everything, but he is not providing the emotional stimulation to his woman. And then he looks up and his woman is getting banged by the mailman or she's getting banged by the janitor. She's getting banged by the delivery guy, just somebody that just came by and said, oh, I think that you're pretty. Because her husband don't tell her that she's pretty. Or the or some random guy walking his dog down the street just noticed that she's doing something. And he's like, oh, 
I noticed that you're always out here walking a dog. I really appreciate that. I just think that you, you know, you're such a good woman. And then she don't hear that enough from her man. So although her man is doing, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, all the things that a man is supposed to be doing, she's not hearing any of that emotional stuff. Have you ever watched a show called Cheaters? You ever seen it? I never seen the show Cheaters was where people be setting up their husbands and wives and then you be out there cheating. Oh, yeah. They, pull yep, up and the white they be pulling up with cameras and stuff. What's one of the main things that the man say when he catches his woman cheating? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How can you do this to me? I, I, I pay the bills. I provide for you. I do... And what what's the first thing the woman always say? You're never here. You don't take me on dates no more. You don't tell me that I'm pretty. Mm-hmm. I think that we have a perception of how things should be. And you know this, Will. We have a perception of how things should be. But then we have the reality of what it is. So you can go ahead and keep dating your woman, keep just paying the bills, doing everything that a man is supposed to do without giving her that emotional support. Then Billy from IT going to be giving her all the emotional support he needs. And the bad thing about Billy from IT, he ain't doing nothing that you're doing. He ain't paying her bills because you're doing that. He ain't feeding her because you're doing that. He Damn. ain't taking her out on dates because you're doing that. All he is doing is providing the emotional stability and making your woman feel seen. Because although she is with you and you're doing all those things, you made her feel invisible. So that dude that comes around and make her feel like she's seen, make she feel like she's noticed, make her feel like she's appreciated. Mm. It's going to be tapping them cheeks. He going to be getting them cheeks. Now, I will say this. If you're cheating on your man, you know, you have no integrity because it's two options. If you're not getting what you need in a relationship, you can always leave and go find somebody that's going to give it to you. If you're low on integrity, right, you have no morals, you have no standards, then you'll just step out. You have no discipline, you'll just step out and go cheat. <laughs> but regardless, somebody else going to be tapping them cheeks. So you may want to, you know, figure out some things your woman want to do. You may want to think what's important to her. You may want to show some appreciation. Hey, baby, I know you worked 50 hours this week. You know what? I appreciate you. Sometimes that's all your woman wants. Mm. Now, you know, Will, I can't stay long because you way out there on the West Coast and it's probably like seven or eight o'clock. The middle of the night where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So Sherry, Rose, Underground Rose, Will, y'all have a wonderful night. Mm -hmm. But y'all just remember all the men and women just remember what I say. If you treat your woman like she's invisible, she's going to be visible to somebody else, regardless of what you do, regardless of what you provide. And as a man, you got to realize, maybe I don't want to get married. Maybe I do. You know, we all have choices in life. And remember, Will, no matter what's going on in life, my brother. Yes, sir. The facts remains the same. There's no game but tie game. Much love. All right, back. peace. <laughs> Thank you, Tie Game. No problem. No problem. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Man, dropping, 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 dropping some gems tonight. Tie Game, as always, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for jumping on. I know it's been a minute since us since we've been on the pod. It's always good to see you. Always good to see you. Always good to have you. Okay. So uh, no game but tie game. Okay, he's been. Uh, I want to. You know what? Let me pass it back to the ladies. Ladies, tie game made a, a great point, and I think for I know there's some guys on the, on the chat who may disagree or they may complain. You know, it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. You know, why do I need to do more? And I think one of the principles we always talk about masculinity is accountability and also understanding it's a relationship. You know, it's not about you. It's about you have to take the consideration of what the other person, uh, especially a woman, how she feels. And we understand that if you understand women, you understand female nature, that the emotional part is what they need. And for us, it's the physical part. But I think uh, Teoki Moonga brought up a great point. 
and there were studies out there and, and uh, where they said that if the woman doesn't receive the emo emotional investment, um, they do start to look at somebody else. And that's why when a woman, when, when a woman cheats, it's more for uh, because they're looking, they didn't receive the emotional support and need from their relationship. Women cheat for emotional reasons. Men just cheat for physical reasons for a variety. So I think as men, we need to understand that we're going to take accountability. We have to, and part of our duty is providing protecting it, but when it comes to a personal relationship with our woman, they do need that investment, and we have to take accountability and make sure that a woman, like Ty came brought it out, make sure that she feels beautiful, she's visible, feels appreciated. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of things that women do to make sure that we keep the household and the family right. And also, especially when we live, understand today in, in, in the West, there are not a lot of guys out there paying 100% of the bills. So there are women out there going, working a 40, 50, 60 hour work week, working a very strenuous physical labor jobs just to support and pay the bills. So we have to appreciate that as well. But there's a lot of guys out there with the mindset, oh, you know, I'm a guy. Especially, I do I do see sometimes in the Pacific Islander men who are very traditional. They saw the very traditional, conservative uh, dynamic in their parents. They look, I'm the guy. They have this uh, mindset where it's it's just by default. I'm I'm the I'm the man. Like I don't need to do this. You know, I never saw my I never saw my parents or I never saw my mom. Uh, I never saw my dad had to do any chores or never had to do any housework. And uh, why do you think? Why do you want me to do all this stuff? even though she's paying 50% of the bills. But I wouldn't say, yeah, I just want to ask you guys, what do you guys want to add on to what Ty Game said? You know, if if you don't, no matter if a man is provided or protecting you, which is great, I'm not trying to diminish that. That's, But if you don't feel emotionally invested or don't feel a strong emotional connection or don't feel emotionally appreciated from that man, I'm not saying you will, but there is a likely that there is a high probability that there will, there will be issues in a relationship. And for some women who don't have a really strong moral, uh, I, want to, I want to say integrity or moral character, it's just, I think it's more biological where if they don't receive it, they're going to get it somewhere else. So um, what are your thoughts about that? So I'll start with you, Rose, and we'll come back to Shiri and Underground Roads. So what do you want to add on to that? You know what? I can't, a man providing protecting is great, but if you're not making sure that she feels emotionally invested or appreciated and beautiful, then there's a likelihood that you, she's probably going to find it somewhere else. And I know that's something of a lot of guys, they don't want to hear, you know, that's one of, one of their complaints, you know, women aren't, lo aren't loyal, but I think a lot of guys don't want to take accountability to self-reflect on the things they didn't do in the relationship to give her what she needed. What do you think, Rose? Well, in my experience, I was in a relationship where I wasn't getting what I needed emotionally and I found it somewhere else. So yeah, I cheated because I didn't, I didn't uh, get what I needed. So, I mean, it, it's exactly what Ty Game was saying. Yeah. There's just really, I mean, I don't really have any much more to say except I've, I've done it. And I know, I know so many women that have too. Yeah. And that's usually, honestly, the only reason why we cheat is we don't get our emotional needs met. Yeah. If we're getting all the other needs met. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Rose. <clears throat> I'll keep it moving. Cherie, what are your thoughts about that? About, you know, if women don't get the emotional needs, even if she's with a man that, he is providing protecting, but he's uh, he's not really emotionally investing or doesn't care about emotionally investing or tries to even try like give like, give it a put any effort into emotionally investing into a woman. You know, there's a likelihood for a lot of women out there that you know if they don't feel it, get, getting that emotional investment, that can cause issues for her to look somewhere else. What are your thoughts about that, Sherry? Um, honestly, you guys kind of hit the point. So, just like kind of hearing what everybody's saying i think the biggest thing um the understanding that i'm getting for it is women really fall in love um through their ears and men fall in love through their eyes meaning like guys mm. fall in love with what they see mm. women fall in love with what they hear so guys like 
by hearing that, like, because, you know, they're kind of giving you, like, we're giving you cheat cards, like, you obviously know that this is what women need. So why even question why you have to do it if you understand, like, that is what a woman needs for her to give you everything, like, and, and for a man, for a woman too, like, you know, sometimes, I don't know, look great and watch the man just do above and beyond type of things. So it's just like, it, it, it takes away from both. So I, I just hear that as men fall in love with their eyes and women fall in love with their ears. And it's just a give and take type of thing. Like you, you need to understand, like there's more to a woman than um, providing in the areas financially. Uh, Cause they are very emotional beings. Yes, we are. And then for men, like, Phys- physical things is a big deal for them. So, yeah, I mean, that's really all I got to say. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that, uh, Sheree. <clears throat> uh, but pass it to you, Irene. Irene, what are your thoughts about that? You know, um, you know, uh, you know, if women, men, there's a, there's, there's a lot of men out there who just think that, you know what, that's, I don't need to emotionally invest in my woman. I just need to provide and protect, and then. But the reality is, like I said, the, the reality is, is you know, women out there, women need emotional investment, and they need to feel loved. And if you, and the reality is that if the women don't feel loved, that that can cause harm in the relationship, that can break down the relationship. And in, in, in certain in certain instances, you know, they might go find some uh, somewhere. They might go find that emotional support somewhere else. What are your thoughts about that on the ground roads? My thoughts is, why didn't they figure that out before they get married? But- Dating the representative and figured out the real person after they got married. Mm. The other thing is sometimes people are so stuck on the dopamine in the relationship that they are colorblind to the red flags. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. That was good. So how well do you know yourself, right? You have to know yourself and know... um, what you want and those are the conversations you're supposed to have before you even make the commitment um because then you're gonna have two people you you're marrying an apostle you're dating the representative and not marrying someone who's an imposter but who you thought was a representative and will remain the representative throughout the marriage So, yeah, go ahead. No, I had a, I had a question for you on the ground, Rose. Is that a conversation that Pacific Pacific Islander men are having? Because we just brought up a great, uh, we just brought up in the beginning, our culture is so taboo when it comes to anything when it, that's related to affection or sex, right? So we, we brought up a great example of most people. Do. We don't, we're so afraid to show public affection or talk about sex at all. So are, are Pacific Islander men and women even going to have that conversation? Hey, you know what? This is the type of affection I need for us to, to me, for me to feel beautiful. Because I, I would argue that we don't even have that conversation at all as Pacific Islander men in, in th- that Pacific Islander men and women in relationships. We date and then we get married and we figure it out later because our culture is like we don't, it's taboo to even not only do it, but also have that conversation talk about what do you, how do you want me to touch you? How do you want me? To, what's your verb words of to make you make you feel beautiful, to make you feel aroused, and make you feel sexy? You know, those are the things that we don't even talk about at all. Um, so, I'm that that that's just one thing I would say is like do do Pacific Islander men and women really have that type of conversation in a culture that kind of uh, suppresses that that type of topic or that type of discussion? I think this generation is having that discussion, which is wonderful to yeah. hear. Um, again, you have to look at the households, you know, the emotional part, being able to talk about our feelings and thoughts. We're pretty much suppressed. So it's not the norm for us to really articulate how we feel mm. and our thoughts. Um, and so now we, and we didn't see that language exhibited in our parents' relationship where they're able to articulate how they felt about, you know, their thoughts and feelings in a way 
in situations and things like that. Because I, I don't know, but I grew up with my parents where they had discussions that was in the bedroom, not in front of us kids. Mm. So at the same time, I would have loved to know how to resolve things from watching my parents being an example of showing me what it's like to um, resolve conflicts. Does that make sense? Or how yeah. they arrived yeah. as a partnership to sort out some of the challenges and things like that. So I didn't get to see that. I think um, because it's not the norm in, in the households to allow our children to express, um, it's challenging when we get into our relationships and, and especially for some of us who are raised traditionally and then you marry someone that's more westernized so then you have this clash between the culture and then the Western culture altogether. And how do, what do we do? It's, it's a battle. And um, what I found that worked for me is I still hold on to those values, but I took the good things from my cultural backgrounds and then try to, and also learn to understand myself and the person that I'm with because he was not Polynesian, but his language and he was his way of communication was very different. And I really respected that, but I learned more about myself by learning about him and his what he holds valuable, which was communicating in that way. Does that make sense? No, that's um, true. Yeah. Yeah, and I think and it's a partnership. And so um, again, communication is vital. And, you know, you have to ask your question, you know, in the beginning, why we get married, what goals, what direction we want to go as a partnership. Because mm. then if, if, if that's not had before you make the commitment, there's going to be a lot of that. And, and like um, Rose said, you know, just establishing... Um, you know, she said, she's right. Women emotionally need need a soundboard, right? Um, and so, and men too. So when you come home, you want to default. Your soundboard is your pop. That is your safe space. That should be your safe space. But if that's not presented, of course, the soundboard will be available all around. Okay. I had a question because you brought it, you wrote in the live chat, you said that Pacific Islander women traditionally, maybe the older generation were stoic, right? Yes, um, because we basically really didn't exhibit and express our emotions. We just did what we had to do. You know, it was, we fulfilled our duties and our roles. We took care of our partners, but, um, you're, you know, the emotional thing was like not a factor. I think it was just something that we did um, and not, mm. how do you say it? Um, not really talked about. Yeah. Um, you know, we can have those discussions. I think with women, we can have those discussions with uh you know, aunts and stuff, but then there's also some boundaries also about having your discussions with your, um, about your marriage sometimes with your aunts and your mother and stuff like that. So there's a fine line, <laughs> you know, for, for those who are Christian, you know, you cleave to your husband and, you know, as parents, sometimes we also have to let them, um, as the couple go through this whole process. Um, but um, again, I, I can't really say, we just, we just did it. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we had no time to sit with our emotions. Mm. We had no time to, no way of really um, expressing it or no outlet or, I, I'm not sure about others, but it, Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Irene. I want to <clears throat> I want to ask you ladies when it comes to women, Pacific Islander women who are in a relationship, 
and they're not getting the emotional investment they need from their partner. So I know I have my, my position on it. I know there's a lot of guys in the live chat who may disagree or don't like, but uh, I do believe if the relationship fails, I do 100% blame the man. I don't blame the woman because if the man is a leader, he's the one leading the relationship. And if we are accountable as men, as leaders, as all leaders should, then we should be hold ourselves accountable to be aware of everything that's going on in the relationship to make sure to make it work. I do see for a lot of time, there are a lot of guys who always want to blame the women, who all who never take accountability with themselves to see what didn't work and what Underground Rose brought it up, how to resolve the issue. You know, we ignore the issue and and we don't really take responsibility on it because of relationship, it goes, it's, it's a two-way street. You know, one, we can easily, the women or the men, we can easily sit here and blame each other. But at the end of the day, there, if you're in a relationship, you can't 100% blame the woman saying, oh, she didn't feel beautiful. I did my part. Uh, is there something that was lacking from your part? Because if both, if both parties got something, what they wanted, the relationship would work. So I think as men, as leaders, we have to take accountability on that. So but when I want to I want to talk more on if there are specific other women who are in a relationship and they're not receiving the emotional investment or connection that they want from their partner. In your opinion, what do you think is uh, solutions for specific other women who are watching this right now? Because I know there's a from the request they wanted they wanted to hear that part. And of course we have to understand like the that some of these women divorce and leaving is not an option. Okay. So that's not an option. They don't want to get divorced. They don't want to leave for whatever reasons they may have. Maybe moral reasons, maybe religious reasons. So I want to hear your opinion, ladies. So if, if divorce and leaving the relationship is not an option, what should a woman do if they're if with a man that is not giving them the emotional investment and it's not taking accountability to fix that issue. I would just like to hear your, your standpoint. And of course, cheating is not an issue. Uh, it's not, it's not on, is is it's not an option, but they really want to be in a relationship, but they also understand I don't want to stay in a relationship and be miserable for the rest of my life with this man, even though he does pay the bills and he is fulfilling it. But, um, uh, what do you what, what, what I want to hear from you guys? What do you think? What do you think these women should do? And and uh, just hear your opinions on that. I'll start with you, Sheree. What do you think? A woman, a piece of women right now in the relationship that they're not getting the emotional investment and connection they want, and they don't want to leave the relationship. They don't want to cheat. They don't want to divorce. They want to figure out what to do. In your opinion, what do you think they should do? I think one solution uh, to help with that is showing a man and being an example of what you would want instead of like maybe communication, you know, you over communicate something. So try something else. Um, I mean, you know, show him what it is that you want, like um, be the example, because to be honest, like a lot of things that we do as women rub off on our, our man. So I, I think by being able to be an example and, and do what, necessarily you want whatever it is like emotionally like be there for them in that way and and like when you show them that like tell them like this is what i would want from you like do you see like what i do for you in the sense like this is necessarily what i want wh whether it's being romantic or whether it's like uh communication whatever it is necessarily i, I would say i would say like an example maybe is like be that example for him because maybe he might not necessarily understand to the fullest and he probably won't tell you that he understands what you're trying to say so the best way he can tell you is probably no because he just doesn't know what he's supposed to do so if communication necessarily isn't working then uh, maybe act upon it yourself and do it for him maybe see if that might be a thing or help necessarily. Okay, thank you for, for sharing that, Sheree. Uh, I'll pass it to you, Rose. Rose, what do you think? You know, there's some pissed off under women out there who they're in a relationship, they don't want to leave, they don't want to get, they don't want to uh, get divorced, they don't want to cheat, 
but they also understand I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be miserable for my whole life. How can I figure this out with my man that doesn't uh, with the the Pacific Islander man I'm with that doesn't really believe in that romance, emotional connection, investment stuff? What do you think? They, what do you think they should do? That's a hard one. So you're and you're married, and you're not happy because your emotional needs are not being met, yeah. and you don't want to resort to divorce, nor do you want to cheat. Yeah. Well, if you're explaining this to your man, communicating this, and he still doesn't get it, and he doesn't want to improve to try to help to, to make you happy, then the only resort is divorce and if you feel like you're stuck well if you don't have kids you're not stuck but if you have kids it makes it complicated it makes it very complicated so basically he's saying well i don't want you to be happy we have kids together but you have enough i, I mean i don't know that's that's not something i can answer honestly yeah. it really just depends on the situation there's too many factors that are involved um so yeah i can't really give an answer all right. Thank you for sharing that, Rose. Well, what did you say, Rose? It's just too complex, too complicated. Yeah, I would have uh, yeah. this experience, um, which I haven't had that experience where yeah. I've been married to someone who wasn't meeting my emotional needs, where I didn't cheat or left. Yeah, it just because I, I cheated when my emotional needs weren't met and we worked it out. Um, but it was a lot of pain and suffering that we went through. But then we, we rose above it. So so in the end, it worked out. I feel like it has to get to a point where the woman is cheating or she's literally like filing or, or like their separation for a guy to really get it in his thick skull that, oh, this is actually serious. I really do need to get my shit together and really like focus on her needs because any woman whose needs are met will always just reciprocate that right back to her man. That's just how yeah. we are. Just a woman's nature. So. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Rose. Appreciate everybody in the live chat. I see Fetty. Good to see you on the live chat, Fetty. Uh, Pet, uh, well, Fetty G. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to be heard, drop a super chat. I'll definitely read it and respond to you guys. And of course, it is a public show. We'd we'll love to hear from the fellas. We'd we'll love to hear from the ladies. I do see a lot of opposing views on the live chat. I would love to have you jump on. If you got something to say, if you have something you disagree with, I would encourage you to come on. It's easy to say that on the live chat, right? It's easy to say that on the live chat when uh, when there's no, uh, when they can't respond back to you, okay? So, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear the open discourse. Be Whether you agree or disagree, jump on, click on that link. I would love to hear uh, what you guys have to say. But I'll keep it moving. All right. What does that say? Uh, was it Mike Tyson? Uh, was that Mike Tyson quote? Everybody has a plan and they want to fight until they get punched mm -hmm. in the face. Until you, everybody has something to say in the live chat until you uh, directly with your, the person that disagree with you and they challenge you and everything you say. Okay. So click on that link. All right. Click on that link. I challenge you guys. But nevertheless, we'll keep it moving. I'll pass it to you on the ground. Rose, what do you think? Um, those specific on the women <clears throat> are saying in, the, in that predicament, right? With the man, provides, protects, doesn't believe in the emotional investment or cares about it. But she doesn't want to cheat. She doesn't want to leave a divorce. But she also doesn't want to be miserable long term or the rest of her life. What's her, uh, in your opinion, what do you think is her uh, her options or her steps that she should she should take? Uh, one uh, emotional intelligence. How much does she love herself? How well does she know herself? Mm. You can't depend on the man to feel that part. There's a part of you that you have to be actively involved in, and that part is learning more about yourself. The second part is, second one is seek individual counseling for yourself and then as a couple. Mm. Counseling, okay. Yeah, that's a, <clears throat> I 
you have to go on and, and get some counseling if that's the case. Yeah. Okay. I want to, I don't know, maybe Rose, I want to ask Rose, but are there other, are there other tactics that you can do? I don't want to say tactics because that sounds so um, <laughs> mis mis uh, mischievous, but are there things that, that you could do to make your man like wake up? You know, um, I don't know. Uh, an example would be something I saw online, and, I, and I, I'm not endorsing this. I'm not. I don't agree with this, but just is something I saw online. A lot of women, if they if they feel unappreciated, you know, they'll work on themselves and get beautiful, or, but they will, you know, they'll decrease the amount of physical, uh, how physical they, they get with their man to teach him a lesson, something like that. Now, I'm not I'm not advocating for this. I just want to. You know, and entertain all options, but there are women out there because I've seen it on other content. If the man is not waking up, the man refuses to emotionally invest. The woman's like, you know what? It's all good. I'm gonna work on myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get fitter. I'm gonna get prettier. I'm gonna look better. But then I'm gonna limit his access to teach him a lesson. Like, if you if you want your needs, I need to get my needs met. So we have to draw the line here. I'm not gonna give give. I'm not gonna just give you everything that you want without getting what I want. So are there, are, are there those types of methods? It may be not, you know, for a lot of people that may be mischievous or that's kind of uh, not healthy, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just opening this conversation for everybody to, to hear, but I want to start with you, Rose. What do you think? Are there, are there methods and tactics that women can do if they're with a man, this, this founder man who just refuse to wake up and not do anything to make sure that he gives her emotional support so he can learn? And, and and there's also the a lot of women will say a lot of women have said this before in previous podcasts. You have to teach your man how to do this, and sometimes you gotta teach him the hard way. What do you think about that, Rose? Anything you want to add on to that? Um, I just can't see a situation where a woman would be heavily invested without having known that to begin with, so she wouldn't get herself in that situation unless she was lied to. And then, you know, he was just baiting her and he marries her and he totally flipped the choice. And she was like, shoot, I'm stuck, I'm pregnant and I don't want to leave. I want to try to make it work, but I'm not happy. And at the same time, you know, I don't want to cheat. But the thing is like, it doesn't matter if you don't want to cheat, it's going to happen. Just like Tygen was saying, you could be at the gym working out. Some guy comes by, compliments you, and you're like, oh, okay, that feels nice. It starts to build up your confidence. Next thing you know, you're going more often. You're working on yourself, putting more energy into you, being more confident in yourself. And you're just going to naturally gain that attraction from other people. And you're not cheating. Right. Because when women cheat, we cheat mostly anyways. And then, yeah, that can eventually lead to physical cheating. But usually that's not the case. It's usually just emotional. And then, you know, the husband may may start to see her her behavior. Yeah. You know, she's going to change. She's going to she's acting different. He might be turned on by it where he knows that he might have to step up his game because if not, then he's going to lose his woman. That's how I feel a guy would think if he sees her getting all dressed up to go to the gym or to go out anywhere and not really giving him the attention he needs, physical attention that is. Yeah. So it's going to become very obvious to a guy. And if he doesn't see that, it's because he's honestly just doesn't give a fuck. And if he doesn't give a fuck, then why are you still in that relationship? It's not worth it at all. Yeah. to be in a relationship where that person doesn't care. Because if he doesn't care, he doesn't love you. It's simple. Yeah. yeah. That's like a big part of love is caring for what your person, you know, what makes them happy, yeah. what fulfills them. So, yeah. Yeah. What I've heard from a lot of, from some of the Pacific Islander men, you know, we, we will emotionally invest in the dating phase because we understand that's, what we need to do to to lure you in. <laughs> I don't, don't want to use that. I'm just joking. I don't want to use that word. 
but you know, <laughs> we 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 understand that the, the dating phase is different from the commitment phase. So, of course, a lot of guys out there would be more romantic or maybe more emotionally investing in the beginning in the dating phase. But I've I've talked to Vista Vander men. We understand that's just the process to get you married. But once we get married, it, then yeah, it's it's done. Like we're, you know, we, there's no more need to proceed anymore because we're married now. So that's just what I've I've I've, I've heard from from Pacific Islander men. But I do believe that uh, I think one of the I don't know who said it on the podcast. I don't know if it's Paulo Fessa who said this on the podcast, but I think for both men and women, we think that marriage is like the ending point. Like that's once we get married, it's over. No, the um, I think Sheree, you brought it up. Marriage is just a marker, like mm-hmm. where we at in a relationship. It's not an ending point. The ending point is making sure that you never, we never leave or you never get separated, and make sure it's success- successful. That's where we should be aiming to. But for a lot of guys and 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 Western and women, uh, I'll keep it fair for both sides that we have this uh, uh, assumption that okay, once we get married, it's everything that like, we don't have, have to put that effort in no more. The same amount of effort that we put in the beginning. But I think people confuse that. I think it's, I think marriage is just a, it's a marker of where we are in a relationship, but it's, but it's not an ending point. The ending point is making sure it's successful, making sure that we build a good family, making sure that our kids are grown and they have a good, good future. It's a, it's an ongoing process. So it, the ending point is when we die and we leave a legacy behind. But I do hear from a lot of guys and women, oh, once you get married, it, then it's then it's done. Then I don't really have to put in that same effort. And I think that's why a lot of people um, fail or struggle in their relationships. It's the same thing you do in the beginning. You make sure you keep going it all the way to the end. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Rose. So I also feel like in those relationships where a guy is not giving his woman the attention she needs, I feel like he's cheating because if he's not giving her the emotional attention, she's not going to be physical with him. And guys always cheat when their physical needs aren't met. That's just a fact. So yeah. if he's cheating on her, she's gonna feel that, and then that's just gonna. That's never gonna. It's never gonna work. You have to have one to have the other. So yeah. Okay, uh, Rose. Thank you for sharing that. I'll, um, I'll pass it to Sherry. Um, I think you were talking about in the beginning yeah, just, uh, like, what were like yeah. tactics necessary. Yeah, what are things that women can do to like wake his man to fuck up? Yeah, wake him up. Man. Um. Well, I mean, you kind of said it, like, because I'll be honest, I've I, I've done that. Where in a relationship, like, I I necessarily don't want to uh, quit in a relationship or call it quiz, divorce, like none of that. Like, I want to literally like use every other resource before that's even like a thing like you know nobody's perfect like they're not gonna be a hundred percent like in the beginning so it's like i want to keep working towards it but in order to do that like you know i'll find other ways like they'll understand that so like men are very into like physical things so it's just like okay like because of that like i have to withhold something from them in order for them to like get it like i'm serious like i'm dead serious like don't expect nothing from me because you can't provide in this need so like it's just like i'll let them know in communication like until you get your act together i was like don't come to me don't kiss me i was like the hugging the distance like we we're gonna cut it like and honestly that method for me has definitely worked because um i i don't just say it i i act upon it and it's just like you got to get your stuff together and that's methods even worked with me you know for myself too like where if they've taken something away from me that i enjoy it's just like oh damn like i really got to get this together so um to be honest like that method is pretty helpful it's just like don't make it a permanent thing um to where you take it away from them for like too long because like they said like cheating does become a thing like oh she ain't gonna give me this guess what i'm gonna go find it elsewhere so it's just like do withhold it from them but not to the point where the extent of cheating like i i necessarily wouldn't go down that world but like everybody just functions differently and people need to understand like not everybody learns in maybe a specific way that you cheat so you just gotta look elsewhere for like help and you know 
um, different ways to get your man to like really get it together. So that's definitely been a helpful tactic for me. Okay. But yeah. I can just see Sharia uh, say, I know we had a 10 foot roll, uh, 10 feet distance uh, rule in the family function. Now it's uh, 100 yards. <laughs> one feet, like, see you in a week. <laughs> now it's 50 feet. <laughs> no, I don't want to look my way. Don't breathe. <laughs> don't breathe my way. All right. But yeah, okay. Thank you for sharing that, Sharia. And uh, I'll keep it moving to you, Underground Roads. Um, what, do you, what do you think, Underground Roads? What are, what are some solutions for for women who are in that predicament in your opinion that they can do to kind of show their show their men or maybe wake them up to understand like this is really important like this has to be addressed uh just move differently um i agree with rose go to the gym self-care go work out you know he'll start to see that um that you are investing in yourself and he's probably curious as to why all these changes are happening. Um, I'm not sure about um, Cherie's point on um, holding back intimacy because that can also lead the other way. So, you know, um, it's, a, it's a form of manipulation and control sometimes. So, you know, you, you kind of have to be cautious of that. Um, there's, you know, it's a two-edged sword um, in that sense based on what your methods are. But just self-care, move differently. You know, he sees that you are making the effort in, in investing in you and taking care and probably be curious by watching your example. Um, but that's that's all I could say, you know, if, if that's what you have to do to, to kind of you know, wake him up, maybe, yeah, um, I guess some people do that, or some might go to spend more time with at their parents' home. <laughs> that might be a wake-up call um, yeah. to say that I'm almost exiting, you know, this relationship. But then again, you know, uh, are people in love with the idea of marriage, or are they doing it, this is my question, are they doing it because it's something that they have to do because um culture wise does that make sense mm -hmm. because there's there's a lot to think about when you think about getting into a relationship is that um what is the purpose of you connecting with this person and the direction that you're going um i think there's a lot of cultural expectations for them to also uh get married in a sense without you know the idea of it uh, then really really thinking about that uh, what their goals are as uh, a couple but again just move differently that's all um, you might have to you know be unpredictable because uh, and he's probably going to get curious as to why you're unpredictable in a sense it's like oh you know now she's packing my lunch or I just, I think doing good deeds, I think sometimes might be another way of uh, severing that relationship or, or make some changes. Um, but, you know, in a marriage, there's a lot of sacrifices that are made. Um, and sometimes one person might have to be the one that has to, hey, you know what, put my foot down and set the example. Um, that's just my two cents. Just move differently. Self-care. <laughs> yeah. I know, there's, I know there's a lot of guys, that, uh, Pacific Islander men, that would say, you know, women back in the day, they didn't complain. They just stayed married in a relationship. But I think we, I think that's an, uh, just being like presumptuous and we're assuming that just because people stayed married doesn't necessarily mean that that relationship was healthy or the, the family was successful, you know? So there is a lot of people in relationships, especially the more traditional back in the day where people just tolerated each other. I think it's not about the length of the relationship. I think it's more about the quality of the relationship. I think that's what's most important, right? <clears throat> but we, you know, we, uh, we, but usually with those people, they never want to consider that option, you know? Oh, you know, women back in the day were, oh, they never left. 
but you never they never considered the option that there were certain certain cultures or certain situations that you know the uh, women back in the day couldn't leave. No, I'm not. In, I'm not agreeing about the leaving part, but I do have a hard question that I want to ask you guys. Of uh, when I understand, I understand integrity. I understand morals. I understand religion. I understand we have to. I believe in marriage and making sure we we work it out. But I do under, I do believe that the most of the solutions, if we if, if the relationship is going to work out, I do I put more pressure on the men. I think men leave women follow. So if the, if the man is accountable, if the man is do, doing what he's supposed to do, naturally the woman will follow suit. But what are your, what do you what do you guys think about women who are in a position where say that they're not with that type of man? Should women just ride it out and just for the sake of keeping the cultures, just for the sake of uh, making sure that that they don't get talked about or they don't um, you know to keep make sure that uh, they stick with what the religion is telling them or, or should they just tolerate that of being unhappy like what a, I understand that people have a strong sense of never leaving and never uh, never getting away from the relationship but what happens if they're in a situation where that man is not taking accountability so I understand I see some of the ladies on the live chat would say just you know just do it yourself just work on yourself you know self improve be yourself and but what happens if the predicament where yeah, if you do all of that and there's still nothing nothing got nothing is happening or there's no results that's that's working to fix the issue with the man that you are does that mean you just keep doing that for the rest for I guess for the next 30 40 50 years or well, you know, it's 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 a really hard discussion because because our religion and the, our culture is so rooted in religion, and so rooted in in, uh, in uh, traditional uh, norms, which is you never leave, you never divorce, at all. Now, I believe in that. I I do believe in that. I do believe in, from my for me personally, uh, never did never. I don't believe in divorce, but that, but that is why I agree with uh, underground roads. The the qualification process is for me is so important that if I'm gonna marry somebody long term and never get divorced, I'm gonna damn sure make sure I talk about everything before we get married. I'm gonna talk about expectations. I'm gonna talk about uh, do uh, our, our non negotiables. What I don't like. What do you like? What are we willing to compromise on? I'm gonna talk about everything, not only with the political, physical, sexual, uh, religion. You know how we wanna raise our kids. You know how we argue, how we fix our, uh, you know, what are what are what what ticks you off, what gets you mad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely talk about all that before I get married. That way, I don't have to figure that out during marriage. When I go into marriage, I already know what's what. I already prepared for it. But I know most people don't do that at all. So they get married first because of love, feelings, lust, whatever, and then they have to fig. They do it reverse. And now they have to figure out uh, how to. Uh, how to be with that partner when that is something that you should have done in the in uh in earlier before but what happens it will so i do understand our culture is against that but what are your what are your thoughts on on just the women who are in a situation where they're they they're working on they're doing everything what the what everybody's saying in the live chat they're working themselves or taking themselves out on dates so maybe working out of self-affirmation feeling themselves better but I would argue you can only do that for so long if the other person is not giving you any reciprocation at all. I mean, it is a relationship. I know you have a, you can be strong and have a relationship with yourself, but if you're not getting that with your partner, we are human beings at the end of the day. So, I just yeah, what do what do you what should the avenue? What do I, I just want to hear from you guys. Uh, what do you think about when women are in that situation? Uh, what do you think? Because you know, if we if we talk about going outside of it. I know in our culture that's looked down upon, or if you just say divorce, or, you know what, this is not working out. There's a lot of the older generation, like you know, we never get divorced. You stay married um, until you you just you stay married, and you never get divorced, no matter what happens. And I've had conversations with women before on previous podcasts, with the, that's the rhetoric that their parents or the uh, the older generation told them, no matter what happens, you never divorce. And they tried to do that for 30, 40 years, and then they eventually they just gave up. It's like, I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. And then they've maybe they didn't 
maybe in the uh, in today's generation in the West, we get divorced earlier, but seven years, but because they had that mindset from their parents and what they taught, you never ever get divorced, no matter what happens. You still get divorced eventually, but instead of getting divorced in five, seven years, they get divorced 50, 60 years later or 40 years later. And, um, but yeah, that's a very difficult thing to talk about and to navigate because we get consider all the things that we're, uh, when it comes to our culture, when it's rooted in religion, what the older generation is telling you guys. But what do you think about that? Uh, the uh, the women who are in that, who are in that situation, and they're doing everything that you guys mentioned before, and nothing's working. Do you just do you do you guys believe that no matter what happens in in a relationship, you never get divorced, and if you have to tolerate being unhappy for the sake of the kids, uh, and for the sake of the culture, for the sake of of uh, reputation for the sake of the religion do you guys believe that women should just do that no matter what and just sacrifice that for the just for the sake of uh for the sake of being married um i would like to hear your opinion on that i'll start with you rose what do you think about that okay so like back in the day in samoa when a woman wasn't happy with her husband she just left she went back to her her tribe and that was simple. It was very easy yeah. <clears throat> until introduced and um, religion was introduced. And then that made things more complicated, especially here in the West. So I feel like if you're still married and miserable and you have kids as a Polynesian, I don't think it's healthy to stay married because that energy is just going to, your kids are going to see that energy. They're going to grow up with that energy. They're not going to see that you're not affectionate, you're not loving, you're not happy. And they're going to think that that's how a relationship should be, which is not he healthy at all. With my first marriage, my husband was Colombian. So it's like they're a very strong culture as far as family unit. His parents stayed married, still married to this day. So we didn't believe in marriage at the time. And especially I grew up Mormon, so I was religious at that time. So it was like... Hell no, don't do this. We had a son, but I didn't have my needs met. In the end, he was abusive, and I stuck with it for four years because of my son. And then I had to leave, and it was the best decision I've ever made. It was a lot of sacrifice. I had to sacrifice seeing my son, but at least I was able to save myself and find my own happiness. And, and I'm happily married now, so... I don't believe that any woman of any culture should stay married if the guy is not meeting your needs to a point where you're literally miserable. Um, I mean, life is too short. A lot of people, they'll get married, they'll get divorced over and over, and then eventually find someone and you may, may, may or may not be happy. But I mean, marriage is really tough. If you've done everything you can to save your marriage and at the end it's still not happening then your only resort is divorce and that's there's nothing wrong with that because you have so much of your life to live and why would you spend 30 years with someone miserable when you could have cut that short and found someone to make you happy or, or just be happy on your own and live the rest of your life happy that doesn't make any sense but like mm -hmm. i understand the concept and the importance of marriage because I've, I've been there done that three times in my third marriage so i understand commitment and marriage and how important it is and how how tough it is because even with my current marriage there have been times where we were separated and i was almost i was on the brink of divorce because of not having my emotional needs met but we worked it out and um and we're in a better place now because we've worked it out. But it took me getting to like literally the divorce paper sign where he was just like, he had to literally, he had to change. He had to make drastic changes because I was that serious about the divorce. And that's what it took. It took literally like, I'm sending these papers in. I was going to send it in the day before I was going to send put in the papers. He, you know, we, we, we worked it out. But yeah, it's um, it's a very serious thing. It's very hard. But if you can figure out how to make it work, then that's great. But if you haven't 
had any success after counseling, after, you know, even like short breakup separation. And then, cause it's not like you just get a divorce. You're obviously going to separate, have some time apart, get back together. It just kind of goes back and forth until finally like, Oh, I just can't handle this anymore. But I don't believe that you should stay in a miserable marriage at all. No. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that Rose. And yeah, thank you uh, for sharing that. I appreciate you guys on the live chat. Being active at the uh, 50 G, Marianne, definitely let me know what you guys think. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, but I know this is a very uh, difficult topic, or you know, it's not one not one of the most popular topics. But this is something that happens in our community. But I do want to discuss it before we conclude with the with the podcast. But let me pass it to you, Sherry. What do you think? Do you do you think that I understand culture, I understand religion, I, I understand making sure that uh, we don't disappoint our families and, and our parents in the ideal world we everybody gets married happily ever after good relationship but uh that's the ideal world but in reality there's issues thing, things happen in a relationship but there is this older generation mentality that i do see that sometimes it's they're taught to the pacific honor women that you never get divorced ever whether it's a moral reason whether it's a a uh, religious reason, whatever it's a cultural reason, tradition reason, whatever it is. But uh, do you think that if a woman's in, a, in that situation, where they're not getting the emotional needs met, the man is absolutely not taking any accountability on it? Uh, should you just tolerate being in something that you're not happy with for the sake of just keeping up appearances, for the sake of the reputation of the culture, the family, and the, the children? Uh, do you think that what are your, what is your opinion? What is your opinion about that? That's hard for me to speak on. I mean, yeah. I have no experience in marriage or like anything in that field necessarily. Um, my only opinion is before, like, you guys kind of touched upon it too. Like, that should be discussions before marriage and stuff like that. So it's just like, uh, people got to understand too. Like, marriage is something sacred. So, um, you got to think long term too, you know, if things get rough down the road. But at the same time, it's just like, I don't know, it, it depends. Like if kids are involved and stuff like that, like for me, I have I came from a broken home, man. So for my parents to be divorced and stuff, that took a toll on us. Um, you know, being in different households, having a bunch of different parents, like, you know, being asked, who's your mom? And, you know, it's like, okay, which mom are you talking about? Number one, two, or three. And it's just like, uh, from my perspective, it's just don't even, I don't know, don't even get married if you guys already know, like, you guys are going to have problems like that. Um, kind of save that type of stuff for later. I don't really know. Like, I, I just don't have experience necessarily in that field. Um, divorce is kind of like a hard topic because, you know, I get it in the sense of... Um, your mental health is like super important and so is your emotional needs are super important. Um, I guess my opinion is only like that, that also should have took, took in account in the beginning of the relationship. And when you get kids involved, man, it, it does get really crazy. So I'm only speaking from a kid's perspective of uh, being in a situation like that, man, it takes a toll on them that uh, accountability, yeah, don't sacrifice your happiness necessarily, but remember like you know you got in that mess and now you got kids like yeah i think about them too like yeah that that life is hard so i mean that's really all i got to say about it okay no uh, thanks for saying that uh, sure now sheree and sheree i want to ask you do you believe in that man do you believe in that uh, belief that no, you never get divorced do you believe in that um no I do believe happens. in divorce. I do believe in divorce, but divorce only happens if somebody cheats. That's the only type of divorce that I believe in. And okay. um, like physical abuse and stuff, like those would be my only two reasons for um, divorce. Like even if things get tough and stuff like that, I'd rather work through a marriage that are going through tough times, me personally, rather than divorcing and starting up new with somebody else and kind of going down those lines again with somebody, but that's just for me. Like, I just wouldn't want to do that all over again. Like, I just want to stay with one person. And if they don't do either one of those things for me, like cheat or physical abuse, 
I rather uh, work through the hard times than I. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's reasonable. Outside of yeah, outside of physical abuse and cheating. Yeah, that's reasonable. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll keep it moving. Uh, uh, Irene, what are, what are your thoughts on that uh, mentality? You know, because I've seen it with specific on the women that's been deferred from their parents. You absolutely never get divorced. Never. And some and for some women, and I've heard it from previous podcasts. You know, it's taken to the extreme, right? Regardless of its abuse, regardless of its physical, that you never get divorced. So, uh, what's your thoughts about that? You know, should women, Pacific Islander women, because we're we're talking about Pacific Islander women, if they are in the predicament, and we're just talking about the situation where if they they're not getting what they want, and the man has no accountability, has never uh, could care less to put any effort to change it, so should they just tolerate? being unhappy for the sake of keeping up appearances to make sure, you know, for the religion, for the family, for the culture, uh, or should they just find, uh, or should they, should they leave? What, what do you think about that? Cause that's very hard. That's a very hard conversation to have. And, uh, I've talked to women on this podcast before on previous podcasts and interviews where, you know, that's what they, their parents told them. You absolutely never get divorced. Never. And if you do that, you disappoint the family, you ruin the name, you disappoint your church, you disappoint God, you disappoint your morals and values. And um, you should just suck it up and tolerate it for the sake of all that. What do you think, Irene? I think nobody plans to get um, married to get divorced. Does that make sense? Yeah. We don't get married. We didn't plan it. We didn't plan the divorce when we, when we got married. From my experience, uh, I cut it. So both of us knew what we wanted for being in the church, what we wanted for our children and for ourselves. Um, we went to counseling. I went to counseling. And then we went to counseling a couple of times. And um, it was to the extent of not only psychological abuse, but um, of one person cheating in the marriage. Mm. And so for, uh, for someone, for women, we tend to question ourselves and doubt ourselves, what, where did we go wrong? What did we do? We blame ourselves as to why someone searched for uh, you know, intimacy outside the marriage. Um, and so the counseling didn't work. <laughs> Um, and it just took one phone call from his business trip for me right there and then to know, without me having evidence, to know he che he cheated. No okay. evidence, but it was just the phone call and that intuition just kicked in loud and clear. I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I, I did my part. I raised my children um, the best I could. Um, at the same time, I did not want my children to, especially daughters, to accept that a woman needs to um, needs to suffer in a relationship and that it is acceptable to be psychologically abused. And also to teach my son to learn from this lesson. And so... Um, after that, we had the counseling and that. I went to the counselor and the counselor said to me, um, what is your decision? Um, you either going to experience this if you stay in the marriage or deal with it um, and deal with it or are you prepared to leave? I actually came to the counselor with a clear answer to leave. Um, in that process, my children were also receiving counseling. Not only were we having counseling as a family and counseling with my parents, but there was also counseling with the bishopric and counselor. And I'm so lucky that my bishop at the time was a shrink. And so um, he knew exactly what was going on. And we, I had that support. Um, but yeah, I, I took the risk of um, 
signing the divorce paper. Um, at the same time, the children was also um, crucial. Um, and so there was a lot of trauma from the divorce. Um, I think because I protected my children a lot from what was going on. Um, and to the point that my son, the youngest one, does not even remember a thing that happened. But they all experienced the divorce differently, all of them. And so it was important for me to also teach my children that I'm human um, and that I can be resilient um, and that they can be resilient, that they can come back from something as traumatic as that. But it took years of, um, of ongoing communication with them. Um, it took years for me to also heal. Like healing is an ongoing process. There's no, like I say, there's no deadline date. But there was a lot of open communication with my children. And there was a lot of embracing how my children felt about the situation. I was not going to discount their feelings or, and I was also accepting that they would blame me or get upset um, that um, I had left the relationship because of someone's, inf of the infidelity that took place. Um, but now um, my children are much wiser. They're more resilient. Um, and it's okay. It's, it's okay. Um, you know, there comes a point that, uh, you have to be very, very decisive as, as far as making that choice, whether you're going to, you know, it's either you or the kids, you know, at the end of the day, um, part of you making those changes also you know, there's the labor pains of going through all that whole process. But at the end of the day, your children are stronger. Mm. And um, that's that's the, the blessing on the other end for me. My children are very, very strong and they know and they've learned from that lesson. But they also learned how I be from the choices I made and how I bounced back from that situation because it was tough. When you get divorced in the church, there's really no support for women. It's almost like they overlook you, you're in a different status. Um, yeah. So that was the challenge. Um, the hardest part is when you have parents who have been married and, 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 you know, and then you have grandparents, you have generations who have been married. Um, but then I had parents who very, um, really embraced my choices um in in signing those papers and and making you know divorce and all of that happening um because they would rather see me i think my father said after all of this he said i actually have my daughter back um after the whole yeah. process and it's okay it's okay it's it, like i said we didn't get married to get divorced but it happens it does happen Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Irene. I really appreciate that because um, I know it's a it's a very hard conversation. It's a conversation that most people don't want to talk about, especially in our community. Because I know there's a lot of the mentality. I know we are very prideful in our culture, that you know, in our traditions. That that's what separates us from the West. You know, we're not part of this Western uh, divorce culture because in America, divorce is just a norm. You know, no fault divorce. So we kind of pride ourselves on being different, being more traditional. So it's it's really it's a really hard conversation to have. You know, to have that conversation. That when you what do you do when you find yourself in that predicament? Do you just tolerate it? Do you just suck it up? Take one for the team, for the sake of your parents, uh, for for your kids. And it's hard. It's you know a lot of people can have their opinions about it. You know, it's you know a lot of people are against it. You never get divorced or. You know, they make they may judge you for being morally or you know weak or not not trying everything to make a marriage work. But you know, when you have these conversations with multiple 
multiple people and there are so many different situations. So I think that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard to navigate. So appreciate you for all of you guys sharing it. Uh, thank you so much, everybody in the live chat. Uh, I guess to end off this podcast, uh, to, um, you know, bring some romance into this podcast. Um, I was just looking, <laughs> I was just looking at the top 100 things. I was, there's a list out here, a hundred ways to be romantic to your woman. So hopefully we, hopefully we can leave some solutions to everybody on, on, on this, uh, on this live stream. Uh, we're not going to, we're not going to go over all, all a hundred. I just want to talk about the top 20. I just want to pr- bring up the list. I just want to ask you guys, I'll, I'll read it one by one. And I want to ask, what's your opinion about it? Is it true? Is it not true? What's your, what's your thoughts about it? Does this bring, does this make you, uh, does this, um, make uh, this, does this romantic gesture, make it, uh, improve your, your, your emotional connection with your man. So I'm just going to go over the top 20 and I just want to ask you guys and then, uh, let me know what you guys think about this list uh, to end off this podcast. And everybody in the live chat, let me know what you guys think about this list as well. And then we'll conclude and then we'll, uh, and that'll be it. Okay, so let me just bring up this list real quick. And I just want to go over one through 20. I just want to ask you guys, what do you think about the, the one through 20? And just give me your your, uh, your general thoughts about it. Okay, so we'll go over the first one. <sighs> The obvious one, it says, uh, buy some flowers, do it properly, make them your far- your partner's favorite color, hide a note inside, buy them to, tell them to tell them how much you like them and present them what your partner is least expecting. Let me pass it to you, the piss of the ladies. What do you guys think? Does flowers, uh, does a uh, man buying a few flowers uh, spontaneously, uh, does that make a difference when it comes to bringing a emotional connection? You know, I've heard some Pasavanda women in the past say that they don't like flowers. So it's interesting. They're just throwing in the trash. I don't know. That may be the stoic ones uh, wrote on the ground wrote. <laughs> maybe we have a stoic one. Maybe not the flowers. But let me pass it to you. Uh, that's how we do, Rose. The flowers, does that help? Are you are you a flower one, a flower type of girl? Oh, I think you're on mute. Okay, so flowers are always lovely. I favorite yeah. our orchids, and I have plants everywhere all over my house. So okay. I think the note means more, and this just spont- spontaneity of it means more to me. Just like that, that little note, that special little whatever it is that they write. It's always that words mean a lot to me. So so that means more than the actual flowers, and then just just the thought being spontaneous and just being surprised. The surprise is uh, ro- romance is surprise. So, yeah, that's I mean, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, all right, I pass it to you, uh, Sheree. Flowers, yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm definitely one of them. I I enjoy flowers yeah. here and there for a surprise. I'm with it. Okay, and what type of flowers specifically? Um, does it matter? It doesn't necessarily matter. Like. I, I more care about like if they pay attention to details like um, my favorite color well, um, okay. necessarily. And then as she said too, like I think the note means a lot more than the flowers and just the gesture in general, like to go out of their way to do something like that because I know it's hard for men in general to think outside the box. So even doing something like that, I, I think is, is nice. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And then uh, Irene, flowers? Yes. Yeah, flowers is okay. I don't know whose funeral he's bringing the flowers to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's well kind. Uh, but no, it's it's a great gesture. That's uh, I can't complain about that. Simple things go a long way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So, f- fellas, you guys heard it. Flowers. All, all the fellas who have no idea how to be romantic, this is for you. Okay, this is for you. We're getting direct feedback from uh, Pacific Islander women. Okay, uh, buy chocolates. All right, the one your partner likes, leave them in the office, desk drawer as a surprise, or in the glove compartment of their car. Rose, chocolates, yes. I'm not really uh, into sweets. I prefer cho- uh, strawberry covered chocolates, and partners know that. So, and then leaving the compartment of the car is not a good idea because it'll melt. <laughs> <laughs> Especially you're in Vegas. In um, 
the surprise aspect of it is sweet. But yeah, I'm not, I don't really eat candy, so. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's sweet, obviously. Okay. Literally. Uh, so strawberry, <laughs> strawberry chocolates for you, okay. Uh, Sheree, chocolates, yes or no? Uh, that will be a hell yeah for me, man. Like, sweets, that's my weakness right there. Like, you get any chocolates, I'll probably, yeah, the flowers, man. I'm just probably going to rip that bag open and end up eating it. But I'm on the same page with her. Like, chocolate covered strawberries, go to. Oh, okay. So, I like that uh, combination of both the flowers and the chocolate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Irene, chocolates, yes? Yep, do nothing wrong with chocolates. Is, cho is, chocolates, with uh, is, is chocolates uh, appropriate for funerals? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Forrest Gump might have something to say about that. <laughs> 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 okay okay all right so let me know in the live chat i know a lot of you guys uh plan to get married and so a lot of you guys are single so what do you guys think and ladies so we'll go to number three take them on a romantic retreat a little break just for two we've, we've got hundreds of luxury cottages for couples just go on a retreat and uh away away from everybody and just spend time with uh, as a couple rose what do you think that How's is that my absolute favorite right there that's yeah. number one for me just spending time out in the middle of nowhere to cabin somewhere, just the two of us off grid. Oh my God. Yeah. That's romantic. Yeah. Okay. So just going off grid and just going to, just planning it. Do you want, do you want to be told spontaneously, Hey, get your bag, bags ready. We're going like tonight. Is that, you? is that, is that good with you? And he's that type. He'll just yeah. do it. I mean, he's not okay. here, but we talk about it. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Cherie, what do you think about romantic retreats? Um, yes. I think that's definitely like super important, um, especially if he's the one doing it. It's I, I think I feel different about it if I do it and is doing all the planning and stuff about it, but I think it'll be a lot more important and heartfelt for me yeah. if they did it. Okay, all right, and then uh, Irene? After the funeral, we're going to a, a romantic retreat. <laughs> I don't know, but this is setting up some expectations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, why not? Exactly. But, you know, nothing wrong with going camping, too. Or hikes. Oh, you like to go camping. So for you, it's camping. Hi or hikes. Just simple things that don't even cost money. You don't yeah. have to spend that money. Not every And not everybody's Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> know, yeah, so I know you're in, into your health, so just go on the retreat. Hey, let's go. Let's go on this. Let's conquer this mountain, you know, or this hike trail. Okay. Okay. All right. So, romantic retreat looks like it's a, it's a good one. We'll just go over the top 10. Uh, number four, go on the long walk. This one is so easy, but just getting out of the house can be a great way to blow away the cobwebs and spend some time together. <clears throat> long walks. Uh, Rose, what do you think? Long, just going a long walk into the all sunset. All the time. You might as well love that more than anything. Yeah. Okay. So long Especially walk is good. I have so many dogs, so we take our dogs with us. Uh, take your dogs. Okay. Dogs. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Rose. I'll pass it to Cherie. Long walks. Yes. As long as there's no hills, I'm with it. Mean Hills is not my best friend, man. <laughs> no, no hills. No hills. No, you don't want a challenge. You don't want. No, nope, no, no, thank you. Don't you. I don't want to be. I don't want to be huffing and puffing, man. That's not cute. You know, trying to go up a hill, like no, like I just want a straight path, like that's flat. We're good. <laughs> okay, straight path on long walks. Okay, all right, and uh, Irene, I know I already know this answer, but yeah, <laughs> long walks, uh, long walks, Irene. Yeah, long walks on the treadmill at the gym. I'll take him to the gym six <laughs> days a week, 4 a.m. in the morning. That's how much I care about his health. I'll have to do that. <laughs> all right, long walks in the treadmill at 4 a.m. in the morning. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I like long walks. To the bank. <laughs> 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 all right let's keep it moving let's keep it moving all right uh number five make a meal for them sometimes you're never made for them before from scratch you know just make a home a home cooked meal uh 
for your woman. You know, usually, especially if a woman's the ones making or doing all the cooking, and just you know, just be a bit different and just make a cook for her. What do you think about that, Rose? Oh yeah, cooking definitely. Love cooking. I love being cooked for. So it's mutual. Okay. We all right. for each other. And we both know how to cook really good, so it's great. Cooking all together right. is actually really romantic too. Oh yeah, cooking together. Okay. Yeah, especially right. naked. cooking naked together. Yeah. <laughs> cooking naked. There, there, I saw there's a class they actually and do that. Food off of each other's bodies. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that's next level. That's some next level. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hundred percent intimacy and strong connection, <laughs> right? Five bar, five G connection, right there. Mm. All right, all right, Rose. Uh, I'll pass it to Cherie. Cherie, your man just cooking you a meal, a home cooked meal. Yep, I'm I'm with it. As long as we ain't spending money outside, I, I'm with home cooked meals. Okay, home cooked meals. Okay, and then uh, Irene, home cooked meal after the treadmill at four a.m. He cooks you a meal. What do you think? Hopefully it's not a funeral and we'll live after the meal. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with that. I think like Rose said, cooking together is awesome. Okay. All right. So far, so so far, so far, so good. No, uh, we'll just go to the top 10. All right. Uh, declare a, f a film night. Just watch some oldies, some old classics, old, old movies together. Why not? Rose? Oh, yeah, I love classics. That's probably, like, the only thing we really watch is classics or documentaries. Um, snuggled up together, cuddling is a big, big thing. So, yeah. Especially if it's raining outside. That's, like, perfect night for a movie. Because you can't go out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cherie? Oh, I'm with her 100% on that. Like, she hit all of it. Uh, rainy night, man. Classics, you're set. Cuddles? Okay. All right. And then uh, Irene. Yeah, I'm with that. Even if it's a UFC fight. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about, Irene. Yeah, UFC. that's me. <laughs> yes, get it. Let's watch a UFC fight, a boxing match. Let's go. Okay. Never, I've never heard that one before, but I'm definitely going to try that one. <laughs> Uh, number seven. I don't know about this one, but it's probably the one, probably the only one I know. I don't, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do about this one, but when I hear from you, just write them a letter, you know, write them a letter telling them how much you uh, feel, how much you feel and care about them. Rose? Oh my God, that one hits home for reals. I love having letters written to me. That's like up there, top, top three for sure. Does the handwriting have to be like? My husband has the most beautiful handwriting, so he's what an if, artist. So I love if, seeing his writing. Okay, what if they? Have, what if that? Because I've heard, I've seen women who have, like, guys who write a letter, but the handwriting is like you know, uh, elementary. Like, is it, yeah. that would, would that be a cute. problem? Their, their writing is like a little kid. I think it's still cute. It doesn't really okay. matter. Okay, doesn't really matter for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah and poetry, um, poetry right there. My husband oh, poetry. is a poet, so we like to write poetry to each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Drop some bars. Uh, Cherie, letters? Um, if it's written to me, I definitely, like, um, I would receive it, but it also wouldn't be my top for me. Like, oh, okay. I would appreciate it, but I, like, I, do, I don't mind it, too, you know? Like, I'm okay yeah. without it. You're the, you're the type who just throw it in the trash right after. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's, I've seen women who are like, oh, this the literal thing is not for them. I'm very yeah. sentimental with things, so I'll definitely hold on to it. But like, I think out of everything else that's being said, I, I would put that more on top to me. Oh. No, I, have, I, have a, I have, a, I have a, a family member who wanted to write a letter to a girl. And I, I told him not, I told him, I don't think that's the type of girl that likes, like, you know, into the letter, into the letter thing, mm. he did. He wrote like a heartfelt letter, really hard, like it was one or two pages. And uh, yeah, she never, yeah, she blocked him right after that. Yeah, Dang. so that's I think up. I think it depends on uh, understanding if, if, if that that's your type of woman in that mm. that sense. 
but there's a lot of modern women today like they don't want to they don't want to let her <clears throat> but uh irene letter yeah no, nothing wrong with the letter even just a little note in your lunch box or something like that i think that's cool okay so letters so far is number one through six seven depends on the on the woman uh an eight ticket them out dancing oh that's a good one rose absolutely even if it's just in in the kitchen doesn't have to be going out you could just dance in the house dancing is so intimate i absolutely love it but more like um salsa merengue just like like latin dancing because you're always yeah. like close together not necessarily like hip-hop no it has to be like romance romantic oh. dancing not the hip-hop grinding you know grind grind no no <laughs> no <that's me. laughs> Oh, okay. Just Latin dancing. It's very sensual, very intimate. Okay. All right. Cherie, dancing? Um, yeah, I don't mind dancing. Dancing is actually pretty cool. But for me, I think I'm a little bit more standoffish when it comes to Latin dancing because I know it's more sexualized. Yeah. Um, I'm not with that. I'm more of like, if you can goof off with me and we just like jamming and just doing weird, like whatever's. I, I like that better, like just being free. Like I, I, I'm not with like the super closeness. Okay. Okay. Irene, dancing. Yep, dance. yep, for sure. I'm for dancing. I like to have a dance off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And do a workout, a, a dancing workout routine, right? You, you can you can work out and dance at the same time. Well, you reminisce all the old style dancing from you know the Cabbage Patch all the way to now. <laughs> <laughs> Got to know the old school moves, right? The old school moves. Okay, and the last two, uh, number nine, invite your friends round. Uh, yeah, bring bring your friends over and get, as a get together. I guess you invite her friends and surprise them, and just bring them and uh, bring them around and. Have, a, have some time together. Rose, what do you think? Like couples dating? I think that's yeah, fun. Just, yeah, just fun. You have friends and you just like get to know each other, talk yeah. stories, and play games. That's really fun. That's something where it's just like fun and you laugh a lot and you get to really see another side of a person. So yeah, that's definitely romantic. Anything that includes laughter and fun is romantic. Okay. And then uh, Sheree? That's a yes for me. Um, I think group settings are always fun. Uh, especially if they're close, like, friends. I definitely like to create memories um, with my other half and plus people that would be involved in my life in general. Okay. And then, Irene? Uh, I'm not too fond of having friends, depend what you call friends and acquaintances. Again, if it's if it's family, yeah, that's cool. But at the same time, a mm, bit iffy. Okay. All right, no worries. What if he invites uh, uh, missionaries over? <laughs> no, 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 no. Someone's getting converted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Last but not least, uh, ask how you can help. Uh, the problems are your problems. Even just reminding them, hey, I can, I'm here for you. I can help you out. Uh, just asking that question to her. Um, uh, passes you, Rose. What do you think? Just hey, I'm here for you. Need help? Just asking for the help. If, if oh, yeah. Help. Number one, what can yeah. I do for you? Well, there's a lot of things you could do. You could take garbage out, you could go do this, fix that. That's romantic because <laughs> that gives me time to relax. Oh, okay. All right. So, asking for the help that's a good one. Cherie, just asking, uh, what do you need help on? Like, need some help? Yeah, I think I think that's a yes for me too or even like them just doing it without even asking that man that's a whole different ball game too yeah i don't know that's that's going more of expecting us to be psychic i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a lot that's a lot to ask you know we just, just tell us what to do we'll do it right just give me a list <laughs> much easier um i'll pass it to you underground rose yeah asking to say i need Asking for help. You need help from me. I think that's a great. And I think it works both ways. Uh, sometimes couples don't know how to communicate that. 
Okay. All right, there you have it. That's the top 10, top 10 things. At least we can offer some solutions for a lot of guys out there, especially the Pacific Islander men who have no idea. All right, zero, zero idea of how to be romantic. So those are 10 things that you can definitely look into and try to do in your relationship. I appreciate you guys for sharing your thoughts on that, on that, uh, on that list. You know, romance is something that we don't often talk about in our Pacific Islander culture. And the talking about emotional connection and bonds and being affectionate. We don't really talk about that at all. So this is one of the topics that's really hard to have and go really deep. And I just want to say thank you so much for all you ladies. Thank you so much for being part of the panel for tonight and having this open discussion. And shout out to everybody <clears throat> on the live chat. I appreciate you guys on the live chat. I see a lot of you guys, uh, Goku, Marianne F, Fet the Fetty G. All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for jumping on and being a supportive on the live chat. Uh, but this was a great conversation. This was a great topic. And uh, and thank you for the person who recommended this. It's, I think it was really a, really a good topic and uh, because it's something you would, you would definitely don't see a lot of Pacific Islanders uh, talk about. And I see EPA talking on the live chat. Good to see you. It's been, a, been here for a long time. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for the algorithm. <clears throat> too lit to quit. Hey, too lit to quit. I'll join you on the next one. How to get a <laughs> how to get a feel first. Come on, too lit to quit. You know, it's, there's only a bunch of ladies here. Why <laughs> why 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 couldn't you jump on and have a conversation? Whether you agree or uh, disagree. All right. But nevertheless, uh, as always, you guys already know this uh, this uh, this this podcast is always public. I definitely would love to have you guys jump on and be part of the open panel. And don't forget, if you do want to support me uh, on my channel, the best way to do it is support me through my locals. It's in the description of the video. You get access to exclusive content, vlogs for the behind the scenes on the Friday, Saturday podcast, access to me. And of course, you also get the opportunity to jump on the live podcast on the Friday and Saturday ones. And uh, just to let you guys know, I do have some interviews coming up uh, for the next two, uh, for the next month on Fridays. I do have some Pacific Islanders that I plan to come on and interview personally on the Fridays. Um, I've decided to have some entrepreneurs coming in, into the studio, have some pastors, mm -hmm. have some uh, just, you know, very regular everyday uh, Islanders just working every single day, trying to make it work for their family. So I definitely have some new, some new podcasts and interviews and content for you guys. I definitely uh, for the Friday ones coming up. And of course the Saturday night shows on, on the weekend on Saturdays for all you single people out there, definitely tap in for that. But that's it for my plug and from all my YouTube stuff. I just want to pass it back to the panel. Thank you so much for making the time. We had a great discussion tonight. And uh, I would ask you guys what's your final thoughts from tonight's discussion and how you guys, um, how can people find you if they want to find you? I'll start with you, Rose. Rose, final thoughts and how can people find you? Oh, so um, there was something that I wanted to mention earlier, so I'll just say it now. Yeah. Um, what I've noticed from talking and seeing observation and just experience in the Polynesian community of couples that have stayed married and no matter what, no matter if there was cheating, no matter if there was, you know, like you know, the infidelities, abuse that had stayed married. Um, what I've noticed is that that, energy it just trickled down to the kids because the kids became what their parents were their kids stayed in marriages too where there was cheating misery and abuse all for the sake of staying married because their parents stayed married and even though they knew what their parents were going through at the end of the day their parents still stayed married and it wasn't until you know the spouse died that my auntie, single aunties, you know, they're finally free and they can talk and go hang out with their other sisters. It's just like I, I witnessed that growing up and it was just it was really sad to witness that and see how fake people are in the Polynesian community. Oh, let's be let's be Christian and let's keep 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 our marriage together. But yet let's cheat on each other and let's be miserable and let's abuse each other because I've seen that 
with every single Polynesian couple and marriage, with my cousins, aunts, uncles, people in church, my mom's friends, my friends, my friends' relatives, we all see this and we know, and yet they're still married and we're, and we're like proud of that. That's nothing to be proud of because that just trickled down to the kids and then the kids end up going through the same thing, thinking that's how it's supposed to be. No, it's not how it's supposed to be. If you are miserable, if you are unhappy and you've done everything you can, you, you did, and, and at the end of the day, you know, there was cheating or whatever it was, like marriage is not the answer at the end of the day. Like divorce is the answer and that's okay. It's okay to get divorced because you'll find someone better that will make you happier and saying, oh, it's for the kids. No, you're actually making it worse for the kids because the kids feed off of that energy and they think that's how it's supposed to be. Oh, my parents stayed married, but yeah, they, they had shit going on throughout their whole lives and I've seen them argue and this and that. That's not healthy at all. So I don't believe in, in sticking together for the culture, for the religion, when at the end of the day, it's toxic, it's unhealthy, and that's just going to trickle down to your children. And it's going to keep on going until that cycle is broken. We have to break that toxic cycle. So yeah, I wanted to mention that. No, no, and this, oh, and at the top of that list of romance, man, yeah. it needs to be foot massage, because I don't know any woman that doesn't like a good foot massage. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because if I'm a woman, you know, they got some big feet. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We love having our big feet rubbed. <laughs> <laughs> and the men love it too. Actually, I, I would say the men love having their backs walked on more than anything. Their okay. backs. That's true. I like uh, the, the walk on the back thing. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's facts. That's so, facts. oh, see, okay. I'm, so I would put the that at the top. Massage. Massa the modern, the massage. Massage in the feet. Okay. Well, I mean, the feet the whole body, but like, especially the feet. It's just, there's something about feet. So, so yeah, thanks Will for having us on. It was fun. It's nice to see you ladies. You guys can find me on Instagram at Hungry Someone's. I'm also on Twitter, which is X, if you guys are political. I'm very much politically inclined. So I'm on there saying a lot of things that's going on in the world right now. If you guys haven't noticed, a yeah. lot of stuff on so yeah. yeah thank you well thank you so much as always rose appreciate that and yeah add, a, add that to the list fellas number 11 uh number 1a 1b feet massage foot massage okay foot massage yeah, there was a lot of haters on there hating on me saying i'm a cheater you know what all you guys saying that you guys are the cheaters don't even act like you're not cheating <laughs> I have the balls to come on and say I did it. And I took accountability with my husband. Hey. We worked out, and I'm still married. So y'all can just fuck off. <laughs> I respect that. All right. Thank you so much, Rose, as always. All right. Like I said, Rose, they always they always like to say it in a live chat, but they can't say it. Haters gonna directly, hate. directly to your face. They can't jump on, you know. So appreciate that. And uh, Cherie and uh, Irene, I know you have to you have a call. So Irene, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. Um, and last but not least, Cherie, final thoughts from tonight's discussion. And um, uh, how, how do people find you if, they, if you want to be found? Final thoughts. Uh, honestly, this was such a great subject uh, to talk about overall. Um, I think it was an eye opener for a lot of like women and for men. I think it's not necessarily a topic that's talked a lot. Um, for me personally, I feel like that's a lot of things I would necessarily bring up, but I think it's it's cool to have these kind of topics brought up. It's very like taboo in our culture. So I'm very much appreciated of like, you know, panels like this because it's so much uh, helpful for us. So I enjoyed tonight. I, you know, got to voice my opinions on stuff. I got to see different people's perspective, necessarily what they um, view it on. So overall, yeah, I definitely enjoyed our conversation. If you want to find me on any social medias, uh, my Instagram would be underscore Ivalani, I-W-A-L-A-N-I underscore 22. But I appreciate Will for always inviting me uh, to join your podcast. I always enjoy it. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, as always, uh, it's a... Uh... Uh, pleasure's all mine. Thank you for making the time to be part of uh, part of the podcast. And uh, <laughs> Marianne F said, foot, ma foot massage guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Um, <laughs> we're 
But nevertheless, <laughs> thank you so much for all uh, for everybody out there. I think one thing I just want to share real quick. Um, if you guys watch my podcast, you guys know my sense. I'm a big believer in marriage, strong families. That's always the great foundation of a great society is having strong families. I do, I do believe I have the mentality. I do, but I don't believe in divorce. But my only, uh, my only uh, requirement is if you you have to focus on the on the beginning part. I think that's what's happening today. You know, choosing one of the biggest decisions you you will ever make in your life is who you decide to get married with and who you decide to have kids with. That's probably one of the top three biggest decisions you will ever make in your life. And I yeah. think we live in a society today, we don't really take that seriously. And I think if you focus more in the preparation part, and I think that's traditionally people prepare for marriage. I don't think people do that today. We don't prepare for marriage. We just, hey, want to get married? Sure. Why yeah. not? <laughs> you know, people are just nonchalant about marriage today, even though it's a, it is a big responsibility and duty. So, um, Mari, I guess for people out there, it's like, look, if you don't want to get divorced, then put more emphasis and effort and literally talk about everything you need to talk about in the beginning and prepare for. But uh, if you decide to just not take it seriously and you get married without really having those full conversations and, and that proper preparation, that that's one of the consequences of uh, you probably it's probably not going to work out. So uh, I, I do I still stand by my stance. I know a lot of fellas on, on the live chat don't like that, but I do. If the marriage fails, I still put that accountability on the man. I know that's a hot take for me. If, if the marriage fails, I blame the man 100 percent because uh, we are the leader. We're the one who set the tone. We're the one women will naturally follow if they're with a good, strong leader. And I uh, your woman is always going to be an extension of who you are as a man and your values. So if you have good values, you're a good moral character as a man and you are accountable and you and you work on your marriage as much as you work as being a strong provider protector, then you'll be able to resolve all the issues within your relationship. I do see a generation of men today that we like to blame the woman and we overlook any accountability uh, of our uh, deficiencies and lack of as a man. So it's I just don't believe in the blame game, especially as men. So I know there's a lot of guys in the live chat always blaming the women for cheating, this and this and this. But we never and I always have to say this to guys, women don't just wake up one day, I want to cheat. It does not happen. If a woman wanted to cheat, if a woman wanted to leave, things had to happen leading up to it. But a lot of guys we live in deniability. We don't want to take account of people, so we ignore that part. Oh, she cheated. But we ignore the fact of all the things that we didn't do or we didn't recognize that led her to that point. So I just want to put that standpoint because if we can all hear, because I, I got to uh, uh, defend my, 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 my guest Rose, you know, for those guys out there on the live chat, you know, talking, you know, talking their shit about Rose. But like I said, you, the accountability is on you. If we, and a lot of guys don't want to hear that. So I got to keep it real, keep it fair for both sides. But uh, accountability and responsibility. Yes, Marianne F. So guys, be better. Take accountability, take it seriously, focus more on the, on the beginning stage and prepare for your marriage. And uh, I think we can do those things and have these type of conversations. I think we can definitely figure out some kind of impact overall. But uh, yeah, everybody out there, don't forget, do this every single Wednesday. Uh, if you want to definitely want to join our future panel, click on the link or just reach out to me on my social media and you guys can join. I would definitely would love to have more people who are on the live chat join this discussion. Uh, join these discussion these discussions and of course if you guys have any ideas for different uh, ideas for future topics definitely reach out to me on my socials always open to hear uh, what you guys want to hear so i can make the content that you guys are willing to listen to and consume but nevertheless rose sheree thank you so much for your time irene thank you so much for your time and fellas get to work I, we just gave you a manual okay a lot of you guys always complain where's the manual of being romantic nobody taught us all these things well, we just gave you a manual. We just gave you a list. All right. So the ladies, we didn't expect the ladies to be psychic. We gave you something that's tangible. Go do it. No excuse. No excuse. Okay. But ladies, off out to off out to everybody watching. See you guys next time. Hot topic Wednesday. Bye. Peace, y'all. Peace.